Today a man is somewhere proclaiming the good news. Winning families for Jesus all around his neighborhood. He tells them God is able to make their house a home. He wants to win this world for Christ, but he can do it alone. But each one can reach one. As we follow after Christ, we all can lead one. We can lead one to the Savior. And together we can tell the world that Jesus is the way. If we each one reach one. Mm, the message is unchanging. Go ye into all the world and share the love of Jesus. Far away or door to door Just like somebody told you That Jesus loves you so You must tell someone who will tell someone Until the whole world knows That each one can reach one as we follow after Christ, we all can lead one. We can lead one to the Savior. And together we can tell the world that Jesus is the way. If we each one reach one. follow after Christ we all can lead one we can lead one to the Savior and together we can tell the world that Jesus is the way Happy Sabbath, Rebecca. Happy Sabbath, Kesano. <laughs> Happy Sabbath, everyone. Okay, <laughs> all right. So we just want to welcome you all to Sabbath School this morning. Thank you for being early and on time and ready to go. We want to welcome, especially welcome our online viewers as well. Please do share the link. Um, we have a lot in store for you this morning for Sabbath School. Uh, but before we get any further, I'm going to ask Ruth Ann to pray for us. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for everything you have done for us and what you continue to do for us. Lord, I pray that we'll have a great worship experience as we come together as a church family. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Today is an interesting day. Guess what? I want to tell them something. Let's tell them. We are independently dependent on God. But what could that possibly mean? All right. You see, the theme that we'll be focusing on for Sabbath school this morning is persevering through our crucibles. I know we have been reading about that in our Sabbath school quarterlies, right? Good. Does anybody know what we are celebrating as a country today? No, but on a sound very dependent. Um, what are you celebrating today, Jamaicans? Thank you so much. So I want you to register three things. Our Sabbath school theme is persevering through our crucibles. We are all to be independently dependent on God. And today as a country, we are celebrating Independence Day. Yes, Ruth, and that is right. And so some, let us, well, yes. And so some of the greatest leaders you'll ever read in the Bible went through the greatest trials. Um, and there's a quote or a saying that brokenness brings about the greatness in a leader. So many times in the Bible, you will see before a person is used by God greatly, he had to go through severe trials. So let's think about a few examples. Joseph had to spend some time in prison after being falsely accused. Daniel was in the lion's den. Moses was in the desert of Midian for 40 years. Jonah was in the belly of a fish for three days. Over and over, we see people that were used by God in amazing ways. But before he did, they had to go through some crucibles. Yes, and not only did they have to go through crucibles, but in order to get to the other side of their situation, they had to persevere. But how? How exactly did these people persevere through their crucibles? Think about it. Who was with Joseph when he was, quite honestly, chucked into a pit? And who was his prayer partner in prison when he was falsely accused? Come to think of it, Ruth Ann, I don't recall Daniel having any company in the lion's den. Well, apart from the lions, of course, but... To further think about it, Jonah, need I say any more? Very alone. As a church, as a country, there are many opportunities for us to come together and support each other in difficulty. But what about those crucibles that meet us when we're on our own? Let me put something to you this morning. It's time to become independently dependent on God. What will you do when you're on your own good question now come to think about it we are in a group a team a family here at church but it's not to hide our weaknesses you know it's to strengthen us and so i want us to remember as we celebrate independence day and we're moving along you know because i see my songbird uncle richie he is ready to come and join us but we have to understand that as a country if we want to move forward we have to be independently dependent on god you think so as a country, every single one of us has to have a relationship with God. And we have to show persons what that looks like. And of course, what is the greatest demonstration of our dependence on God? Or praises, isn't it? Right. Yes, yes. So I'm glad that you mentioned that. So because the greatest display of God's goodness in our lives is our worship, um, what better time to turn over to our song service or our song service team, our praise team. But before we do that, um, what crucibles has God brought you through? It is time for us to lift up our praise. So as our praise team lead us through song service, I want for us all to be involved and to just sing our praises because God has really been good to each and every one of us. Happy Independence Day, everyone. We will sing some songs of victory. What do you say about that? Uh, let us start with joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Number 12.
We're going to sing like we're free, right? Not imprisoned, not in captivity. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts on for like flowers before thee, hail thee as the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, dry the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee, earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Fields and forests, vales and mountains, blossoming meadows, flashing seas, chanting birds and flowing fountains, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou the Father, Christ our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Number 338, redeemed how I love to proclaim it, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed through His infinite mercy. His child and forever I am. Everybody now here. Redeemed, redeemed, oh, redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it is child and forever I am. I think of my blessed Redeemer. Oh, I think of him all the day long. I sing for I cannot be silent. His love is the theme of my song. Redeemed, redeemed. Proclaim it is child and forever I am. I know I shall see in his beauty the king in whose law I delight, who lovingly guardeth my footsteps and giveth me song in the night. Redeemed, redeemed. Redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Redeemed, how I love to proclaim it. His child and forever I am. Amen, amen. And we're going to stand and sing our opening hymn, number 434, We Speak of the Realms. Four three four, hymn number four hundred and thirty four. We speak of the realms of the blessed that con 
country so bright and so fair And of our stories confess But what must it be to be there? We speak of its pathway of gold Its walls decked with jewels so rare Its wonders and pleasures untold but what must it be to be there? We speak of its freedom from sin, from sorrow, temptation, and care, from trials without and within. But what must it be to be there? We of its service of love, of the rose which the glorified wear, of the church of the firstborn above, but what must it be to be there? Or morning is all at an end, when raised by the life-giving word, we see the new city descend, adorned as a bride for her Lord. The city so holy and clean, no sorrow can breathe in the air, no gloom of affliction or sin, no shadow of evil in do thou miss temptation and woe, for heaven my spirit prepare, and shortly I also shall know, and feel what it is to be there, then o'er the bright fields we shall roam, in glory Celestial and fair, with saints and with angels at home, and Jesus Himself will be there. Amen. You may be seated. Happy Sabbath, church. Okay. I will be doing for you the mission story. And uh, this morning, it is coming from Brazil. Now, Simone is a registered nurse in Brazil. And late one night, while on duty, she happened in the restroom. Now, this restroom is not a bathroom like we know restroom. It's a lounge, really, where she could take her break. And she went in there, and the TV was on. She was about to change the channel when she heard an elderly man speaking on health. She became interested. It's health. She's a nurse. So she listened in. She became interested. And the channel she was listening to was Novo Veneto. And she listened and she listened. And she began to listen to this channel. Now, although she was a nurse, she didn't have a stable job. She was a relief person on contract, moving from place to place. And her prayer was, Lord, please provide me with a stable job. And that was her prayer, simple. She wanted a stable job because she had two girls, Zacchelini and Anna Claudia, two daughters. And she wanted to provide better for them. And she wanted to buy a house, you know, parents, you want to provide well for your children. And so she was praying for a better job a stable job. She got a job 
900 miles away from where she was living. So she moved. I'm believing it was a better job, so she moved 900 miles away. And when she got there, she started looking around for a Seventh-day Adventist church because the channel she was watching was the Brazilian version of Hope Channel. So she was listening in on Adventist messages. She looked around that new place where she went. There was no Adventist church. You know what she did? She changed her prayer. She was no longer praying for a better job, a stable job. She started praying to find an Adventist church. She worked there for a while, and she continued watching the Hope Channel, and she got another job. This time, the job was 25 miles away from where she was living. She didn't have to move. 25 miles driving. And so, she took the job. While she continued praying for the Lord to find her an Adventist church. When she got to this new job, and she, drive, she was driving through the city, no Adventist church. One day, on her way from work, she decided to drive through the city. On going through the city, she saw the sign. She saw a sign. She became so excited. And she, she stopped her car, and she went in the building. It was a new church. They had just had the inauguration service. And she said to the two pastors she saw, Louis and Israel, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I've been praying. I've been praying for an Adventist church. And today, when the story was written, she was not yet baptized, but she was doing Bible studies. And she is already ministering. She's inviting people to come to church. We, when we give our 13th Sabbath offering on September 24, please give a big offering because in Brazil, they'll be building four more Seventh-day Adventist church so that others can easily find the church. Reaching out with no one to hold, you've been abandoned with no place to go, wounded and wanting such desperate times, cold, bitter tears are filling your eyes. Get a glimpse of Jesus, for he is right there with you. He knows just what you need. When life gets broken, when you're in despair, he'll carry your burden when it's too much to bear. It's down in the back. Nothing you have lost that he can't replace. He'll help you start all over again when life gets broken. You 
hope God would heal it, but the storm rage and rage. Now it's hard to imagine how you make it through the day. Weeks turn to years, time's passing you by, but you're still holding on to the hows and the whys. Get a glimpse of Jesus, for he is right there with you. He knows just what you need. When life gets broken, when you're in despair, he'll carry your burden. When it's too much to bear, it's down in the valley where he'll give you strength. And there is nothing you have lost that he can't replace. He'll help you start all over again when life gets broken. Even when life gets broken, we still have a God that we can call on. Amen. All right, so this morning, we will be moving into a spe special prayer session. As you might have known, today we are pretty much celebrating a day of prayer for our nation under the theme, Hope for the Nation's Families. And so this morning, we will be praying in our various zones and so we'll be praying for the vulnerable families among us. So zone one, zone one will be praying for the families that have been impacted by violence. Zone two, we'll be praying for families with sick members. Zone three, we'll be praying for the single parents household. Zone four, we'll be praying for families are, for struggling marriages, sorry. Zone 5, we'll be praying for families with financial challenges. Zone 6, we'll be praying for families struggling because of members who have left the church. And then Zone 7, we'll be praying for the North Street family at large. So at this time, I'll ask you to get into your various zones. I'm just going to ask someone to lead a prayer, either a teacher or anyone who feels impressed to pray for each zone. Oh. No, they, they're praying as individual groups, so not allowed.
for our brothers and sisters joining us on YouTube, we invite you to pray in your homes and we will ask our teacher, Shamar Henry, to pray with you at this time. Let us, Heavenly Father, we are grateful and thankful for you are, you are mighty, awesome, all powerful. We humbly come before you, Lord, beseeching your great mercies, not because of righteousness of ourselves, but because of who you are. So, Father, we pray that you may next talk among those who dwell upon the earth, even now, manifest yourself among us. Manifest it in such a way that you glorify it. Please, Lord, I ask that you will let yourself be known among us all. Lord, you see what we as a nation, Jamaica, are going through. We just ask that you intervene in all spheres, in all activities that transpire within the island. Please, Lord, you see and you know you are in control. Where the Lord is on his throne, let all the earth keep silent before him. Father, please, as I come before you, ask that you cleanse me. Indeed, purify me. Wash me, please, Father. I come before you in the name of your dear Son, Christ Jesus, who has opened the way through the veil. Lord, please, not Jamaica, love, love. You see all that is happening. You see everything that is transpiring. And we ask, Father, that you would enter the heart of each and every one of your people. Help us Lord, that we will seek you. If we will humble ourselves, we will pray, seek your face, turn from all the ways that you will heal us, and Lord, and heal my land. Father, only you can do this. You see, on the top, even within the communities around the street, Lord, it is truly a horrible situation. But Lord, even amidst it all, even for pain, you heard him because it has caused of its separation between us and you. So please, Lord, help us. We can see no other. Only you and can bring the healing, bring the deliverance, bring the solution that we all need. So Father, we pray for your grace. Amen. Let it be done. We pray this all in Jesus' name. Have thy name to you, Lord. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, Sabbath School. Our scripture reading this morning will have a slightly different twist today. Our scripture reading comes to us from Colossians chapter 1, verse 29. And uh, this is the verse that was in our lesson study for this week. So I have a small token here for anyone who can come up and recite the memory verse for this week. Don't be shy. Anyone? Any takers? No? All right. This is an open book test then. So join us. As we turn to the scripture, Colossians chapter 1, verse 29. We'll read together. When you have found it, can I get an amen? Amen. After two, one, two. To this end, am I, am I alone on this? All right, again, together. To this end, I strenuously contend, struggling with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. Colossians 1, verse Okay, it's now time for our lesson study. We will connect our YouTube viewers with our teacher, Shemar, who is standing by. And for those in the sanctuary, you may now go into your unit classes. Teacher, we ask you to pray with the students and go right into the study of the word. Have a great study. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Yes, Lord, pray. Lord, Lord, Father in heaven, we are so thankful that as we come forward with the, the privilege of fellowship, of the privilege of engaging in the kingdom of the word, and we ask a blessing of upon each and every one of the children. Lord, you may be with each class, with each teacher, with each student, and your Holy Spirit will control. Lord, in you will be glad. Father, must know, teach us that we may know your that we may know the path which we can go on, and that you would inspire us with your so we pray in Jesus with the full assurance of thank you. Amen. Amen. So we are a wonderful today. Sabbath school 
you know, blessing that I can really say so and here we are listening to and you would have heard it's just you know Colossians 1 verse 29 and it's taken from the view right but just to see our topic is struggling with all energy struggling with all energy you write a lot speaks for this term lesson and there's something for this very powerful and I must it's true here a blessing to have these blessings in such a time like this so when you can the fact that oh, oh true simple, you know who's supposed to come and times will struggle like faith maybe we may a lot of things, you know, but we see what it is, how it is, it is although not just it doesn't just end, he is with all mode. So we have a start, and we've seen it in the previous lesson. We looked at the one that spoke about the sugar, and I just want to know as a matter of fact that no cruise. We in, can ever be to the cruise that Jesus endured. The cross, that which through salvation of many, could never be compared to anything we encounter. Consider that uh, Jesus endured the cross, despite the shame. Uh, and I sat down at the right hand of the throne of God, all for the joy that was set before him. And the joy was to see many souls redeemed, all because he went through that. You know, it is a blessing to partake of Christ's sufferings. It is a blessing. So, let us go into it now. Colossians 1 verse 29. To this end... I strenuously contend, struggling with all the energy Christ so powerfully works in me. Okay, so again, struggling with all the energy is the topic this week lesson, and it is taken from our memory text. The words are exactly in our memory text, and again, the memory text was taken from the NIV version. So we're going to dive into this. Is there a part for us to play? Do we just sit back? And God does everything. Indeed, this lesson seeks to expand on that. It seeks to enlighten us as to what do we exactly do? What role do we play when it comes on to when we go through our crucibles, when we go through our Christian journey, as a matter of fact, overall? What is it that we do? And even just before I continue, I do invite you all to share your comments, to share your questions, of course, for those of us here on Zoom. Also, for those who are watching on YouTube, you may do the same. We're going to have an interactive, engaging lesson study. Okay, so diving into the study now, diving into the lesson, and it's, it's powerful. We're going to break it down. You see that this week, you know? We would have looked on Sunday at the spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. And the spirit of truth is what? Anybody can tell me what or who is the spirit of truth? Anyone, anyone, don't, don't be shy. Remember, we have a nice interactive lesson study. So who or what is the spirit of truth? Morning, Uncle Shemar. Happy Sabbath. Good morning, happy Sabbath. Yes, before I come to the spirit of truth, I, I just want to back up a little on the topic and the memory text and the picture because I always like to um, see what the author is trying to portray. The memory text, the topic, and the scripture encapsulates the um, main um, theme for the week. And first, when I looked on the topic, just without looking on the memory text or studying the lesson, 
it spoke about struggling with all energies. And I said, okay, yeah. When you're in a crucible, you know, you have to, you have to expend all energy. But uh, when you read the text and uh, go through the lesson, you realize, yes, you're expending a lot of energy, but it is with Christ, with the power and the strength of Christ. And when you look on the picture, you see that the person is just holding on. It's just hanging on to the cross. And it let me think about Jacob. You know, he was wrestling, but after his hip was dislocated, Spirit of Prophecy tells us that all he could do was just hold on. And it really gives us the key for um, victory. Not expending energies for, um, in, within our physical strength because it's not going to work. And I think that's where we all fail at times, that we try to do it on our own. But we have to expend that energy with the help of God. So the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen, Auntie Charmin. Well said. Nicely said just no. And it is very important that we understand. And as a matter of fact, we're going to dive into this as the lesson continues, that it is God that is working in us. But again, as we dive into the lesson, we're going to see what part do we play? What part do we play? The spirit of truth is very important. You read in John chapter 16, that the spirit of truth is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, you read about it in John chapter 16 as well. He will give you the various duties, the various works of the Holy Spirit. You know, he will lead you into all truth. He will convict the world of sin, of righteousness, of judgment. And it's important that we understand here that the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. The Holy Spirit will guide us. But the Holy Spirit is God, a part of the Godhead. And we need to understand that God does not force. God does not compel us. If any way, if in any way, shape or form, even the slightest, that God would have done any sort of coercion, any sort of compelling, Satan is ready to cry foul. Satan is ready to complain. He's ready to accuse God saying, hey, what are you doing? So we need to understand very much because you see when the great controversy broke out, see when the war broke out in heaven, God could have, you know, forced all the angels, forced Satan, you know, to fall in line, to obey. But God doesn't work like that. As a matter of fact, it should be said that there are certain things that God cannot do. And it may sound weird, but the Bible says it itself. For example, you're reading Titus 1 verse 2, I believe, where it says that God cannot lie. You're reading 2 Timothy chapter 3, where it says that God cannot deny himself. He's faithful. There are certain things God cannot do because it is contrary to who he is. And thus, God cannot force. He cannot. He simply cannot because that is contrary to him be in love and the bible says that god is love so god cannot force so the holy spirit can lead us can direct us he can lead us to the waters but he cannot force us to drink it and it shows very much the two one of one of the differences when it comes down to the two governments here of that is god's government and satan's government god works with love satan will work by trying to force you, by trying to lead you in the way where you ought not to be. But let us understand very much importantly here that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit cannot force us. And that is where we have a part in that we have to let the Holy Spirit do the work in us. And this is important because I'm going to backtrack to what is said on Sabbath about, you know, a mother who would have had her son slain and another individual, a father who would have had his daughter slain and the mother would have displayed such 
anger and resentment as if the slain, as if the killing had happened that very day. Whereas the father would have forgiven. He would have moved on. And it's all because of the grace of God. So we need to understand what is the difference here. How could these two people, despite having such an action being done to their children in that they died, how could they display such different attitudes sometime after? Oh, that's a question that we all need to answer and tackle. And very much the lesson this week explains and expands on such. Auntie Charmaine, go ahead. Yes, Uncle Shamar, I think you're, you're really bringing out some good points. And uh, in Sunday's section, the spirit of truth, which we know is the Holy Spirit. One thing comes to mind as I read this entire section is uh, the antitypical day of judgment. Um, the, the, the whole world now of uh, judgment that is going on and the fact that God's people in the Levitical system, when the high priest was in the most holy place, God's people, they were outside and they were not idle. They had to do their part and their part was that they had to be afflicting their souls. And it's the same thing for us today. And it's a work I must say, and I'm going to include myself now because I don't want anybody to feel that I'm pointing fingers. I am saying as a church, as individuals, this is something that we are not doing. We are not afflicting our souls. We are not cooperating with this work of judgment, most of us, maybe not all. How do I know this? The spirit of prophecy in early writing, Sister White says that when Jesus moved from the holy to the most holy place, few followed him in. Why? Because when the spirit of truth reveals to us our shortcomings, we must search ourselves, allow the spirit to search us, reveal to us our shortcomings, bring it back before God and say, help me. And then this lesson went a foot further to show us that when we say to God, help me, we have to help ourselves by um, doing what we can to um, avert or stay away from that sin. So if I know I am a drunkard, Brother Shemar, and the spirit of the Lord shows me that I am a drunkard, what I need to do is ask God for help but stay away from the rum bar. If I have to pass the rum bar to go home, I need to take another route. I have to be practical in how I get away from that particular sin. So we need to take time to be holy. And between, sad to say, and I know that um, maybe I, I'm going to be carried to the church board now for this, between the work, even in the church, good work, we are not finding time to stretch out our souls before God, to agonize for the sins that easily beset us because it's a go, 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 go. And every day there's an activity. We need to take time to be holy, that the spirit of truth can do the work that will fit us to be ready for God's kingdom. So um, so what, what you are saying, Sister Sharmin, um, good morning, by the way. Happy Sabbath. Um, what you are saying is that everyone individually must take an introspective look at themselves because each individual then becomes part of the whole. So if we each look at ourselves, that's when we're going to be, as a church, be able to do what you are uh, are suggesting is not happening and what should be done. Yes, Elder, it comes back, and I thank you for that. It comes back to the individual because as a church, a lot of things will be going on. But if I, as a leader or as a member, find that the activities don't allow me I, 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 you know, you, you, you have to jump up to do this. You have to jump up to go and feed the poor or feed the hunger, hungry. But you do not get up in time to have your individual worship. 
then 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 the Lord is saying that this is just um, salvation by works because you're not connected for him to show you, right? Because our worship times, our morning and evening family worship, are we getting that in? Are we getting in our individual worship? Are we getting in time for prayer so that when God's spirit reveals to us our shortcomings, we can present and say, God, give me the strength and to pray. So, so it, there's nothing wrong with church work. I'm happy that you brought that up. But it has to be done in the context of our personal time with God being a priority. Amen. Wow. Amen. Amen. Some sobering points brought out there by Auntie Charmin and Elder Lindsay. And very much rightly said indeed, the whole aspect of afflicting our souls is so important. As Auntie Charmin would have said, agonizing. Agonizing, that is, that we need to understand what that really means to be agonizing, to be afflicting our souls, something that each and every believer ought to understand. As a matter of fact, while Auntie Sherman was speaking just now, this text came to my mind. 2 Corinthians 13, verse 5, where it says, Examine yourselves as to whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do you not know yourselves that Jesus Christ is in you, unless indeed you are disqualified? So an important point right there. Examine yourselves as to see whether you're in the faith. We need to examine ourselves. We need to do that soul searching. And it's so important that we understand this because I said it earlier that the spirit of truth, the Holy Spirit, can lead us to the truth, but he cannot force us to obey it. He can highlight and point out our sinfulness, but he cannot force us to repent. He cannot, because that is who God is. And that is where we come into play. No, we have to allow the Holy Spirit to do this work, to do the very work that he is doing. He leads us to the truth. What are we going to do? What is our response? Again, going back to the story that was told on Sabbath lesson, considering all that happened to these two individuals, and of course, it must have been something that is tragic, something that is terrifying, having lost a child. But they both exhibited two different attitudes after a period of time. How could this be? Well, truly we see that the man would have highlighted that it was by God's work in him. Did he, have a, did he have a part to play? Of course. And that is where Monday's lesson goes into now, the divine human combination. And the very aspect, the very portion here that highly emphasizes that we have a part in that we can't just sit back. I believe Sister Norma would have mentioned this on YouTube. We can't just sit back. We can't. No. God doesn't force us. We have to labor. We are co-laborers with him. Could God do everything? Well, you know, you consider as well the very fact that God could have used angels in the sense of leaving out man and just using angels in bringing the good news of salvation to all of us as human beings. But he chooses us so that indeed we would bring forward the good news of salvation. We will be his hands and feet. And it brings us into a closer communion with God. It brings us into a closer fellowship with him. So very much important that we understand that, hey, if God points out this particular sin in your life, as was said, the spirit of truth will lead you and guide you into all truth. God points out this particular error, this sin in your life. What will you do? This is where you come in. This is the divine human combination. You need to exercise your will. You need to exercise that freedom of choice that you have been given and say that, hey, I will walk in the way that God has for me. You consider the very fact that, hey, you want to be healthier. You want to live a healthier lifestyle. Well, darling, you're going to have to put down the junk food. Yes. Yes. You know, you consider the fact that, Lord, 
I want to be pure, you know? I want to be sanctified. I want to live that life, that holy life. Well, you're going to have to put down the illicit music. You're going to have to put away the impure content because the very fact is you can't pray that prayer of asking God to make you pure and at the same time indulging in the impure. It don't make no sense. It doesn't add, it doesn't add up. That might say you have the wrong formula. I'm telling you, you have the wrong formula if you're partaking in such. Eh? They're very much contrary. They're very much at odds with one another. And the Bible says, can two walk lest they be agreed? So he, who it is, choose ye today whom you will serve. Choose ye today. There is a part for you to play in exercising your will. And that brings us into choose this lesson, of course. Any comments by anyone? Do share. Well, I would, I would just say uh, as you're moving forward, that all of us have an in, in, in a, in a um, sense of good and evil in us. So God has given us that foundation uh, for us to start to work with. And as we study his word and see who he is, who Jesus is, and um, who, who the people of the early church were, we are not going to find it easy to do the will of God or to do what we should do to live the way Christ lived. We're going to struggle. We're going to fall by the wayside, but we have to pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and go again. And by daily struggling, and, of course, making better um, ourselves the way as we go forward, we will eventually reach where... Uh, the, the position that God and that Jesus would like us to be so that we can be um, some of those who, when he comes, um, will be welcomed into the heavenly kingdom. So it's a daily struggle. Amen. Amen. That aspect of a daily struggle. And we're seeing how the memory text eh, is coming into play. As a matter of fact, the title, the overall theme of the lesson in that, eh, there is a struggle. And this culminates in what we're going to see on Thursday's lesson. But before we go to Thursday's lesson, I like in the very fact that uh, our will, our will has to be disciplined. Has to be. You have to take time to be holy. As Auntie Sherman would have said earlier, take time. This isn't a just get up out of bed one day and boops, I am holy. Mm -hmm. All right. And that's it. Eh? This is a struggle hour by hour, day by day, moment by moment, this is a struggle. And as Paul said, bringing every thought into subjection to Christ is so important there. Auntie Charmin, go ahead. Yes, yes, Shamar, the disciplined will. You know, when you read um, the text that they give you, um, Samuel, I want to just touch on Samuel 11, 2 to 4. Second Samuel, you know, when we, the question was asked, what examples can you find from the Bible where people made choices based on feelings rather than on God's words? What were the consequences? You now, this speaks about David, seeing Bathsheba, and we know the results of that. But I want to bring out a point, you know, that the spirit of prophecy brought out. And if you Google I, I googled a little while ago the word Ahitophel, the name Ahitophel. And it's not only Sister White says this, but it is in Wikipedia that Ahitophel um, was one of David's great counselors. Do you know as a result of that action with Bathsheba, David nearly, the consequence was that David nearly lost not only his spiritual connection with God, but even after that was restored, he nearly lost the kingdom because of that act. Yes. And why you think, who was Ahithophel? Ahithophel was not only David's counselor, and he was one of the wisest counselors, but Ahithophel was Bathsheba's grandfather. And as a result of what David did to bring um, Bathsheba in disrepute, Ahithophel sided with Absalom 
And when David was leaving the kingdom, listen, brothers and sisters, you have to go and read it in Patriarchs and Prophets. When David was running and leaving the kingdom, David prayed and said, God, you turn the wisdom of Ahithophel in foolishness because David knew that Ahithophel was wise and because Ahithophel had aligned himself with Absalom, it was almost as if it was a dooms, um, doomsday for David. But for God, David would have lost the kingdom. So when we are doing things sometimes out of feelings, we don't understand the consequences that can go on for years and can affect the other generation. So we're not only making decisions for ourselves for now, but these decisions have far-reaching results even for eternity. Amen. Amen. Well said there, Auntie Charmaine. And even now, as we're bringing the lesson to a close, we're wrapping up first because time is upon us. Important that we understand that or will we cannot walk by feelings that's not what the bible says the bible does not say walk by feelings it says walk by faith or feelings may say this you know sometimes our feelings may be even good but the overall fact is we cannot base every decision upon our feelings because because we need to understand that at the moment in which adam and eve sinned our wills have been in subjection to that of satan and this is the very reason why christ came or one of the reasons as a matter of fact came to set us free you know we would have looked at emancipation day earlier this week independence day therefore walk in the liberty that christ has indeed achieved for us it's important because naturally we are swinging opposite from god we're swinging in the way of satan can the ethiopian change his skin or the leopard his spots no 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 you can't god can do this but you have to allow god and very much when you allow god you have to keep allowing god it's not just a one-time thing conversion is a daily process and it's important for us to understand this and at many times during our christian journey during our christian walk we have to make some radical commitments. There may be some things that you may consider absurd, but it is absolutely crucial when it comes on to sustaining and building your relationship with God. Because the very fact is, sin cannot dwell within the presence of a holy God. So when you sin and when you continue to sin, when you continue to do those acts, those various activities that are against the word of god you are separating yourself from god and this is what jesus has to highlight in what we see coming out on wednesday's lesson in that look if your eye causes you to sin pluck it out guard it out and throw it away it's important those three things jesus said kind of paraphrasing a bit but those three things jesus says he didn't just say to pluck it out and keep it he said to throw it away, throw it away. The very fact is there are various things and very much and very very much as well some petty things that we may hold on to, but it needs to be disregarded. It needs to be thrown away because the very fact is these things as we continue to cherish them will build up a wall of separation to the point in which what happens? You are blocking out the voice of the Holy Spirit. And thus, how can the Holy Spirit lead you into truth? How? We need to bring everything into subjection to God. We need to make those radical commitments in our lives that we will that we will stay on the side of God. We will allow God to do his work, but we need to make that choice. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. That's what Philippians 2, I believe, verse 12 would say. And the very next verse, for it is God that works in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God is doing a work, but you have to struggle, you have to hold on, and that is what Jacob did. And we see it in Thursday's lesson, the very fact that God dislocated his hip, and many times God will have to dislocate our hip so that we can learn to persevere, that we can learn to struggle, because really and truly, brothers and sisters, we don't know what it's like to struggle. We don't but, know. But Brother Shamar, I, I don't think God is really telling us to gouge out our eyes or to cut off our hands. 
uh, I think God is showing, Jesus is showing the example of the really difficult choices that we have to make in order to um, preserve the relationship with God and walk with God. It's, it's that struggle from the beginning of this lesson that um, we're going to have the struggles and the difficulties that it takes. Um, you probably don't even imagine it, the difficulties. When they come, you are just going to have to deal with them, um, try to overcome them. And the ones that are really standing in your way, you have to try to get rid of them so that you can build that relationship where God, um, Jesus will accept you, God will accept you. Um, it's the difficult choices, as you said earlier, that has to be made when you're following Christ. Amen. Amen. Rightly said, Elder Linton. I thank you very much for bringing that up because, again, Jesus isn't calling us to literally look out the eye, but it's important that we understand that there are various things we're cherishing that needs to be cut out. Okay, so I pray that this study has been a blessing to us all and that we will always make that commitment in staying close to God, in persevering, in struggling with all energy as we allow God to work in us, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. God bless folks and do enjoy the rest of your Sabbath. Amen. I'm sorry I, I struggled to get on in it initially, um, having, having technical problems. <laughs> <laughs> understood, Elder, understood. Happy Sabbath, Church. As you have heard, I'm here for personal ministries. How did you minister personally this week? Did you? You did? How? Two persons just stand there and tell me how you ministered. Yes, how? Oh, yes, Dennis. You walked in the marketplace and you gave out a few tracks. And I hope that your teacher recorded pieces of literature distributed and the fact that you had missionary contact this week. I hope that. Yes, Joy. What did you do? Somebody, somebody just passed. Oh, yes. Preach to the community. Oh, you preached to the... Oh, we didn't know you were a lay preacher. We're going to send you to a festival of the laity soon. Yes, you preached in your community. And th that's an important thing to do. Do I see a hand upstairs? Yes. Sister Carl... Is that Carlene? All right. So she took some tracts to work about sabbath and the sunday law and she gave them out to customers good one any other person want to tell me how you ministered this week one more no all right i'm not seeing any hands i'm happy that you are ministering but it is important that these reports be taken in our classes I know that the time is limited, and sometimes it seems as though the half an hour that they give us, you know, they put the marking of the record in that, and it's not supposed to be in it. The half an hour is for the study of the lesson. And then after that half an hour, we, 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 are, we are to be given five minutes to do the marking of the records. And I don't like when you take out my time because my class, oh, my class was very good this morning. It was very vibrant, and I'm sure it's the same thing in other classes. And so I'm encouraging our, our, our superintendents to remember that the 30 minutes is for the study of the lesson. It doesn't include the class time. All right. So I'm happy that you're ministering, and I want to encourage you to continue to minister. Now, as a church, there are certain projects that we have. We have every third Sunday, we are in the community, and I'm encouraging us as members to come out and support that effort. Because 
if, if the community sees only a few people, then they're not as inclined. I remember when we had our gospel caravan, because it was so, it was so, so many cars in the caravan, it drew attention. Now, when you say one person or two people just saying something, it doesn't make an impact. But when we come out in our numbers, and as I have said before, yes, I know that there's violence in the community. But if we, as a people of God, who say the angel of God encamps round about them that fear him and delivers them, if we are afraid to go, then who going to go? How will they know? How will they know that we have a God who protects? How will they know that we have a God who causes us not to fear evil? Because he told us that these things would have happened. And he said to us, see that ye be not troubled. But we are just so troubled. We can't come out Wednesday night for prayer meeting because there's violence in the area. But listen, the reality is that, you know, the people who live in the area can't, can't lock up and go away from the violence. You know, they live in it. We have the luxury of not coming into it. But our reality is that when I leave here, I go to my quiet home. They don't have that luxury. And God is relying on us as his voice to be in the trenches with the people. When we sinned, did Jesus just look down from heaven and say, oh, poor sinners, they are going to die. Is that what he did? No, he veiled flesh and came and tabernacled with us. And that is what God is calling us as his children to do. If we have the spirit of fear, let us ask God to remove that spirit of fear. I'm not saying you're going to see shot firing and you're going to walk in a shot and say, well, you know, God go and protect me. No, I'm not saying that. And I'm not saying that if we are up here and we hear that, you know, man running through the community and shooting and what have you, we're just going to go down and say, well, God go and No, I'm not saying that. But we can't live in fear, and we have to let the people know that we serve a God who is able. So that's it about our, our community, our um, third Sunday activity. Every other Sunday, including this Sunday, even though we have um, church trip, Ella Clark, correct me if I'm wrong, but this Sunday night at 7, tomorrow at 7, we will be in the Word we will have our regular Bible study. And I'm encouraging us to invite our friends and come join the Zoom link or watch it on YouTube so that you can benefit from the teaching. Now, on Sunday night, there were two visitors who were present. Now, Ella Clark, you will forgive my age. He gave me the name. And I have forgotten the name, but I know it's his sister. And so she is sister. Cla she is Miss Clark. Miss, well, well, I, at one point in her life, she might have been Miss Clark. I don't know if she's married, but I know she's here. We have your gift, and I'm inviting you to come forward. Now, there were two visitors, Ella Clark's sister. Please come forward. And there was Carlos Campbell. I don't see Carlos today. But Carlos, I'm letting you know, I hope you're watching. I have your gift, and I will not give it to you in the class. I will give it to you when you come, just as, please remind me of your name. Beryl Dennis. Beryl Dennis. Beryl Dennis. Beryl, we are happy that you chose to be with us last Sunday. We hope you were blessed. And as a token of our gratitude, we give you these two books, and we ask that you read them, and when you are through reading them, that you share them with friends and family members. One of them is Steps to Christ, and it is my prayer that as a result of the Bible studies that you will continue to listen to, because now that you have joined, we expect you to come every Sunday, to join every Sunday. Yes, the, the reward for good work is more work. So we are inviting you to come back this Sunday night and continue to study. And in a little while, we hope that you will make that ultimate step to Christ. Thank you very much for coming. May God bless you. And I encourage you to bring your visitors. 
And for those visitors who are here today, please. Yes, I see many visitors. And it doesn't matter if you don't live here. The good thing with the internet is that wherever you are, you can connect. So all you need to remember is North Street Media and Communications. North Street Media and Communications. Find that on the YouTube channel and at 7 tomorrow night, you can join us as we go into the pages. We are studying the book of Daniel. We have been blessed. We will continue to be blessed and we want you to be blessed too. Thank you all. Have a happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath, church. Okay, so anybody can remind me what we're looking at for some, on, sorry, what topic we're looking on for Sabbath school this morning. Well, yes, that's our lesson study for this week. Um, but what topic, what's the theme for our program this morning? I think I hear it coming out, but it's in line with our lesson. Um, it's persevering through our crucibles. Uh, so crucibles are what give meaning to our life's journey. It's what defines you as a leader. It galvanizes you in what galvanizes in you what you, you what can never be taken away. It's what you would call a defining moment. And the darker the trial, the greater the grace that's provided. Will you embrace your crucible experience for your good and ultimately for the glory of God? By now, we're at lesson six, so we would have some idea what a crucible is, but just for those who might be joining us for the first time since we started this quarter, a crucible literally is a vessel in which metals are heated in a very high temperature. Figuratively, a crucible is a difficult and searching trial or challenge. A crucible experience is a situation in which we are severely tested, often generating new character traits in the process. The value of every crucible experience is that it can forge us into an improved version of ourselves, one who is better positioned to serve other people. So how will we help others if we don't persevere through our crucibles? Here's how you will persevere. We are calling on the North Street Church family and friends this morning to be independently dependent on God. Yes, we will sing together, pray together, study together, but for us to survive our crucibles as a community and a nation, we must be independently dependent on God. So we have now come to the end of our Sabbath school program for this morning. And before Sister Jessica Gordon comes to officially close the Sabbath school in prayer, um, this morning's main superintendent would have been Sister Sharon Smith White, but she's unable to be with us. So, but she asks for us to read a little farewell message that um, she sent. It was a great privilege and pleasure working with you all as one of your superintendents. Sabbath August 6th today would have been my last Sabbath to serve. May the Lord continue to bless and keep you all. May God's goodness continue to run after you. His face shine upon you and his graciousness and peace be with you always. Every blessing, Sister White. We'll now have the closing prayer um, by Sister Jessica Gordon, and we'll transition into our divine service thereafter. Happy Sabbath, church. Please close your eyes for me. Bow your head. Thank you. Your most righteous and eternal Father, we come before your presence this morning. We're not only here because of hearsake. sake. We're here because we need your blessing. We need your guidance. We need your love. And without love, there is nothing, my Lord. Thank you for guiding us. Thank you for protecting us. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to be here to worship your name, to listen to the lesson that you have brought together so that we can grasp everything to go further with our lives. 
Thank you for the opportunity to greet someone and say, yes, you are God and God alone. You're the God of everything. You're the God to keep. You're the God to love and you're the God to care. My Lord, as we are about to go through our weeks, my Lord, I pray that as we go through, it will be not only a blessing unto us, but a blessing for each and every one of our brothers and sisters in Christ. Lord, give us the opportunity to walk through faith. Not only just faith, but understanding what faith is. Because faith is not just by saying, faith is to just hold your head and to realize that whatever we say to your name is your name. My Lord, I pray that as we go throughout our day, today, our Sabbath, it will be a blessing unto all of us. In your mighty and wonderful name, as I come to an ending and say, Amen. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Daman, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Jamaica is celebrating 60th year, but we are celebrating that we are born in, we are born again Christian. We know God. So let's worship the Lord. Daman, let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. God has been good. Okay, our first, we're, before we go, we're going to stand for prayer as we go into our prayer, our song service. Let's pray. Most kind and loving Father, how excellent is thy name above the heavens. Truly, we want to give you thanks. We want to give you praise and we want to honor your name. Father, as we sing songs, let us sing out lustily. Let us remember that you have brought us thus far. Let us draw back the curtains of where we're coming from. So when we sing, God, we sing to your honor and to your glory. And to give you thanks and to give you praise. Be with those of us who are still, those who are coming, that you will still hasten them to come. And Lord, bless us all as we praise your name. Amen. Amen. All right, to warm us up, we're going to sing, We Are Together Again on the 60th year of, of independence. Amen. Ready? We are together, together again, again Just present the Lord We are together again In one accord together again, just present the Lord, we are together again, just present the Lord, we are together again, in one accord, something good is bound to happen, something good 
together again Just praise and the Lord, Lord. Praise the Lord mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, today is our prayer day It's a day where all of us will be praying for our church, for our nation And for every individual So let us sing Our first song is 478 Sweet, Sweet hour, hour of prayer. Of prayer. So our hymn is 478, Sweet Hour of Prayer. If you found it, say amen. <laughs> Not as yet. Hymn 478, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Sweet, Sweet Hour of Prayer. Sweet Hour. Him in prayer. Mm -mm. Or 
And our another hymn is 501, This the Blessed Hour of Prayer. Hymn 501, This the Blessed Hour of Prayer. Isn't God good, man? Oh, praise Amen. the Lord. As we turn our hymns to 477, Come ye disconsolate. Come ye disconsolate, 477. Oh, oh. 
Oh, praise the Lord. Okay, we have come to the end of our song service, and we thank you for lustily singing. How great is our God. Thank you so much for participating. Happy Sabbath, Church. Please listen to the following announcements for Sabbath, August 6th. The pastor will not be in the vestry for consultation on Wednesday, August 10th. Vacation Bible School will be for one week between August 15 to 19 for children and youth ages 6 to 15. It is themed the Discovery Tour. You will need a Discovery Passport and Visa for this trip. Look out for further details. Campers, we hope you are ready because EJC Summer Camp is finally here. Starting this Tuesday, August 9 at 8 a.m., all registered campers should meet at the Kingsway High School, Kencott Grounds, for departure to the campsite, and that's the Robert Lightburn High School in Trinityville, St. Thomas. Please take your lunch, water, and snack for the day. Please contact Marsha Gay Ellison for further information. Get ready for transformation. The Health Ministries team is promoting the reading of the book, Ministry of Healing, for this quarter. Each member is encouraged to get a copy for their home. The Ministry of Healing has brought spiritual, physical, and emotional healing to tens of thousands of people worldwide. Emphasis will be placed on reading and practicing the lifestyle principles taught in this powerful and timeless book. Church, get ready for our next community hotspot hot session. This will be a lunchtime chat session on Sabbath, August 20, at 3 to 4.30 p.m. Focus is depression and anxiety. All are invited to join us this session, especially those who are or have been impacted by either of these conditions. Come and let's learn methods we can use to cope and overcome these conditions. The time is now here. Church Trip 2022 will be held tomorrow, Sunday, August 7. If you have registered for this district outing between North Street and Arnold Road churches, the bus leaves both locations at 7 a.m. tomorrow. Venue is Sunset Beach in Portland. It is with sadness that I announce the passing of Mr. Ansel Raymond, otherwise called Junior, is Sister Raymond's husband. He died suddenly this morning. Also, we have Brother Errol Scarlett, one of our new converts. He passed on this week. Funeral data, details will be shared at a later date. We also have Sister Enid Rochester, 
of Sister Denise Grant's Sabbath School class. She also passed on Thursday. Church, please keep the family members in your prayers. We also have the mother of one of our regular visitors, Charmaine Smith, passed on Wednesday. The funeral service of Mr. Huard Coombs, father of brother Keith Coombs, and mother-in-law of sister Ann Coombs, will be held here at North Street SB SDA Church on Wednesday, August 17 at 1 p.m. On our prayer list, we have Brother Osbert McLean, Sr., who is in the University Hospital, Ward 8, Bed 17. Brother Roy Ellis was involved in a motor vehicle accident this week. He's also asking for prayer for his son, Sister Jolene Howell, Brother Granville McLean, and Sister Joyce Sr. Let us continue to pray for all other members of our church family who are sick, bereaved, or in need during our prayers and devotions. And where possible, let us reach out to them. On a brighter note, we have some birthday celebrants for this week. Brother Donovan Campbell celebrated his birthday on Sunday, July 31st. We also have Brother Mark, John Mark Broomfield, who celebrated his birthday on August 4th. Is there anyone else who has celebrated birthday during the week? We invite you to stand while we sing the birthday song. Oh, Sister Suko. happy birthday on God's richest blessing. And I thought I leave with you. Be strong and of good courage. Fear not, nor be afraid of them. For the Lord thy God, he it is, it is that doth go with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Deuteronomy 31 verse 16. Have a blessed Sabbath. That's in one, two. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Just to express my condolence to all the members who are grieving the loss of loved ones. In particular, this morning, I, I really felt it when I heard about Sister Raymond's lost, loss. Um, let us keep the brethren in our prayers. The devil would really want to dampen our spirits today. Um, but God is still in control. And he will make things better in a little while. So let us come here to worship God anyhow. Let us worship him with a heart filled with gratitude. And I am sure that his Holy Spirit will be poured out upon us and we will be able to cope. All right, so um, officially, this is the first pastoral news from Pastor Howard Smith at North Street. And I deem it a privilege and, and, and on, a, on a light note, <laughs> um, I noticed that 
many. Hi, Sister Genus and Elder Genus. Welcome. It is a lot of the members are in their Jamaican colors. And this morning I was saying to Ella, Ella, I feel away now. <laughs> because even Ella has something green and gold somewhere in the pin that he has on his jacket. Because I never saw the jacket before, so I thought I wasn't alone and so forth. But then he put on a jacket and I became alone. Having some I, sort I, I still believe we hold to our patriotism. All right. <laughs> and so, you know, I, I really wanted to have something black, green, and gold um, um, today. And it seemed that the communication team read my mind. And guess what? They gave me the mic with the green, with the green tape. Hallelujah, brethren. <laughs> And so I don't feel so bad now, and nobody is getting this mic today, because this is how I represent um, on Jamaica 60. Amen? And God has truly blessed our nation, and we must remember that today is a day that we are praying for our leaders, and as well. We are praying for the country on a whole country is indeed fraught with challenges, but God has still been blessing this country. And we can say praise the Lord for our 60th anniversary of independence. Today, uh, you would have heard in the announcement that I would not be in vestry this Wednesday and it will also be the next Wednesday. The reality is I am supposed to be on vacation. It should have started from the 2nd of August. But, you know, I could not just come and then leave. And so I said to the brethren, okay, I will do out this week so that we can get certain bases covered and as of next week, Tuesday, I will officially be on vacation leave for the month of August. So for the month of August, um, I will not be in vestry, as is our common practice, and so forth. And all of the issues that you have, in the clock is available to assist you along with his team of elders. And um, I know that they will do uh, an excellent job. Today I have a, a special friend with me. I have a special friend with me and I call him friend because we are friends. And um, interestingly, when I did my internship at Rollington Town, he was my senior pastor. And also, in very recent times, he was our conference president. And today, Pastor Nathan is here with me, and he has a special service of dedication, which he will be leading out in. And so it is at this time, Pastor Nathan, I'll invite you just to come forward. Like I said, I'm not giving you my green mic because <laughs> I need to represent. But you are here to worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Pastor Nathan. Thank you, Pastor. So excited to be here this morning. God has been very good to me, to all of us. We, we have passed through emancipation. And we have grown up and now we are independent. But we continue to look to God for his sustaining grace. Good to be here. I am here this morning and I want to commend the conference for sending a good pastor, another good pastor to you. And as he said, my, my last pastoral district was at the Rollington Town church and I was privileged to have Pastor Smith as my intern 
And so I shared with him some of the things that I would have learned through trial and error. And, and I have watched him grow, and I'm very happy to know that he is here at Mother Church. And I know that as you pray for him and he works with you, it's very unfortunate that he would have been resting from the church he was at because every one of us need to take a time off to refuel and recalibrate. But this is the time he was introduced, and he is going to be on vacation, but still listening out for emergencies, and Elder Clark will be his liaison officer. Brethren, I'm here this morning to perform a very, very emotional, but, but, but very sacred responsibility. I am here to do the dedication of a baby, Raymond Thompson III. And I was reminded that 30 odd years ago, I was privileged to, to do dedication for Raymond Jr. And so I am privileged to be asked to bless his baby. And so I'm going to ask the family just to come forward as we go through this special rite of celebrating a life and committing a life to the goodness of God. I'm going to ask the family to come forward while we go through this special ceremony. Father's name is Raymond Thompson, Amber Benzal. And we are very happy for, for the two of them. And they have seen it fit to bring their baby to be, church, to be at church today to be prayed for. This is not something that is new. All Christian parents in Bible times would do that. And you know, Anna, when she prayed and had her child, Samuel, she took Samuel to the church and he was prayed for. But the one who is a real example, when he was a baby, Mary took Jesus to the temple and he too was prayed for. And so what we're doing here today is to follow good tradition. In truth and in fact, what we're doing is not really blessing of babies. It is really blessing of parents. And the, the, the overflow of the blessing will be poured out on the children. And so if I can do it right and have Raymond and Amber recognizing that they, there is no real kind of magic in the pastor's prayer. It has to do with the pastor setting the example for the parents to follow. And when parents walk in that path, that's where blessing would be given out. When Moses led Israel, God gave Moses a formula. And every parent who follows this formula will recognize that it works then and it will work in the future. Moses said to the children of Israel in Deuteronomy chapter 6, 4 through 7, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy soul, with all thy might, this day. And says, and thou shalt teach it diligently to thy children. When thou sittest in thine house, when thou walkest by the way, when thou liest down, and when thou risest up. So how babies are blessed is not because of the pastor's prayer. Babies are blessed because the pastor pray for the parents and the parents live a, a good life and they will emulate before their children what it is. So, in a short while, it would have been happening a long time that Raymond is going to be saying, Daddy, what's that? Where did that happen? Where that came from? And, and, and all these questions you'll have to answer and bring them right back to the original source. And God did, and God, and because of God. And so, I want to encourage you both as you should remember all the days of your life that blessings are conditional. 
God sets up a series of real high points. These are what guide society. Principles they are. And you can find these in Exodus chapter 20. Moral code of ethics. And Amber, when you follow this moral code of ethics, the only thing that can come at the end of that is blessings. I am the Lord thy God. Thou shalt have no other God before me. Thou shalt not make unto me any grave image. And, and thou shalt not kill and thou shalt not a lot of things. But I want to leave one verse with two verses. And that is chapter 20 of Exodus 5 and 6. I am a jealous God. And listen to this now. If you don't love me and keep my commandment, it says, visiting the iniquities of the fathers unto the children. How far back, Lord? Unto the, th unto the third and fourth generation. So, so, so your, great, your grandfather's blessing will flow down, down the line if he does right. But verse 6 says, I will show mercies unto thousands of them that love me and do what? And keep my commandments. One of the commandments of God is that mother and father should get married. And I notice that you have two different surnames. If I am going to continue the tradition, I bless you 30 odd years ago, I'm blessing him 30 odd years later, but before next, the end of next year, I need to bless the family and bring in both of you together. This evening, I begin premarital counseling. And I'm hoping that you'll come back to North Street to have the wedding done so that you can show the virgin that you are going to follow the principles of the Lord and your son will be in the right direction. So I ask you four questions. Raymond Amber, do you hear this day recognize that Raymond III is a gift from God? And are you planning to live your life so that he will receive God's blessing? Yes, I do, yes. Number two, do you hear this day dedicate Raymond Jr., Raymond III, as a child of God? And do you hear this day pleasure spirits that you will bring Raymond up in the harmony and counsels of the word of God? Final one, do you hear this day ask God's blessing upon Raymond III that he will guard and direct his life as he grows to be a mature person. My brethren, you have heard their response. And I want to encourage you to, as a church, remember that for a child to be blessed, it takes more than just a mother and a father. And North Street has been here over 100 years, supporting parents as their children are being trained to love God and keep his commandments. I'm going to ask the church to stand up as a as, as solidarity in bringing forward to these young people the fact that when we stand up for Jesus, the church, the community, stands up with them. And so I'm going to ask Pastor, Pastor, you want to just say a prayer for Raymond. Raymond Thompson III. Elders, I invite you to draw as near as you possibly can at this time. Let's surround the, the family. Those up here, just come down to the lower. Just the elders. We, we all, all the elders are around. We need you to come and give support. Because the church is a family. And as of now, Raymond III will be having North Street as the place that he looked to as a support group to guide them through. Shall we pray? Our God and our Heavenly Father, hallowed be your high and holy name. Yes. We give you thanks and praises for who you are. Yes. A God of love and mercy. A God who cares for little children. A God who cares for family, family well-being. And today we are here to celebrate. We are celebrating the life of, uh, of Raymond III. 
and asking you in a special way that you will bless him as he grows. Provide for him those things that he needs through his parents. Yes. Give them a strong conviction to protect, provide for, and nurture. Help them to be able to earn those things that are necessary through work to provide for the needs of young Raymond. I pray also that you will help them to make that right decision so that your blessing will not be hindered. I thank you for the church that has decided to embrace them and help with the spiritual nurture of Raymond III. We ask in a special way that as Raymond grows, that he will learn of you, even as you speak to him, just like you spoke to young Samuel. I ask that you will help the adults around to be good examples. For Lord, there are many bad examples in our world today, but we ask that you will let the people who surround him be good examples, yes. pointing him to you. Help us as a church to pray for, study with, and guide the family. Let your sweet Holy Spirit be in the home. And when all is said and done, our ultimate aim is to be saved in your kingdom. It will, it will be such a blessing to see the Raymond family in heaven. And so, oh Lord, I pray that you will keep them faithful to the very end. We are not able to bless children. So we are following the tradition that you have set, Lord. And through the laying on of the hands, we ask that you will anoint and bless young Raymond III. As we say thanks to you, O God, for hearing and answering our prayer in Jesus' name. Lord, bless Amen. you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift the light of his countenance upon you and give you peace, peace in your hearts, and peace in your home, both now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Before you go, there is a certificate that you will have. I invite you to stand as we, as we sing the hymn number 214. We have this hope.
If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to prayer made in this place. The church is now called to worship. Glory be to the Father. Father, we are here because of your grace and mercy. Yes. We have come into your courts to worship you. And we ask in a special way that you will remove from within us all things that are unlike you. May our worship be acceptable to you. Cleanse our hearts. Invigorate our minds. Bless our souls, and in the end, may all the glory and honor be to you, for we ask these mercies in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Happy Sabbath to you all, my friends, both here in the sanctuary as well as those online. The distinct pleasure and privilege is mine this morning to make welcome all who have come into our service today. Today, when as a nation we celebrate 60 years, and as a church, we have devoted ourselves in prayer for the nation and its leaders. Now, we have sent and invited folks to have come in and worship with us this morning. And indeed, we are delighted that those invitations would have been taken up. Now, I'm going to, I have a very short list that I was presented with in terms of who we are visiting among us. And I'll get to that in a moment. But the first visitor I'm going to recognize this morning, and I want you to listen to me attentively how I recognize this visitor. I want to recognize in our presence today the director of the South Southeast Regional Health Authority. And he is Brother Errol Green. Did I say something wrong? Do we normally introduce visitors as brother and sister? Is that how we normally do it? I said brother today, brethren, because I recall him saying something to me the last time he was here. And maybe it's an omen, but it's coming along. He's going to be your brother. I'm going to invite you to stand. And I'm sure not everybody know you. I'm going to invite you to stand. I'm going to ask you also to remain standing until the welcome is, is through. Now, I'll turn to my short list. I have on my list Sister Tricia Longdon from West Croydon. That's in England. And Brother... Mario Robinson from West Croydon in London. I'm inviting you both to stand. Am I seeing them? Oh, yes, they are uh, right, they're, they're on that side. 
I have also Mrs. Beryl Dennis from Kingston 10, inviting you to stand. We have Petro Kalel Powell from Kingston 10 as well. Now, I did indicate that the list I've been presented with is a very short list. I wish if all my interviewing lists were this short. But um, I'm sure, absolutely certain, there are far more visitors in the sanctuary and probably even online. So I'm going to invite all our visiting friends to stand at this time and be recognized. Pastor Nathan, it seems like all these people want to be members. They don't want to be visitors. Right. Indeed. Let me, te let me tell you. We at North Street, we are pleased, extremely pleased to have you this morning. We are fully aware that you could be in a, any number of places this morning. But thank God you have chosen to be here with us. And indeed, our worship service this morning, I believe, will be made richer for your presence. So it, it is my hope and my prayer that as you come today, when you leave, a word would have been fitly spoken so that transformation would, be, would have taken place in your life. So you leave here not being the same as you would have come. Thank you very much, my visitors. You may be seated. Now, as I salute our regular members, I am looking slightly to my left at two individuals who are, you know, beautifully decked out. And I'm going to invite Elder Elders Aston and Claude Genius to stand. And I'm asking you to stand, Elders, because we have newer members of the flock who they don't know you, and we want them to recognize you. So we are going to invite you to stand. Right. Elder Genius works out of the East Jamaica Conference. She has... I, I, I thought the shoulders were a bit broader than that because of the burden that you carry. But I know that Trev helps a lot in terms of taking that journey. Thank you, very, thank you very much. So, if members, if I were to ask again our visitors to stand and ask all of you to leave, I'm sure that they'd be unhappy. You know why? Because this place just wouldn't be the same without you. So we are happy that you have come in today. And I know that you are going to have a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord as we worship him. So I say to one, and I say to all, welcome, and do have a blessed Sabbath. And with that, wherever the people of God are gathered, praises are one to go up to our, to our Father. So I'm going to invite you to stand at the appropriate time as we turn our hymnals to the hymn number 499, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. That is the song we'll be using for our opening hymn this morning. Oh, we, we can have it. 
Good morning, North Street. I want you to bear with me a while as I take you on a little glimpse of what is happening in our nation today. Mother and three children killed. Four men found in shallow graves. Woman missing, police boyfriend charged for murder. Schoolgirl stabbed by her pair after altercation. Son kills father in Papin. High power weapons seized and other illegal items. Farmer found in shallow grave. Teacher found in shallow grave. Gregory Park under curfew because of the flare up in violence. Is Zozo the answer? Crime has gotten out of hand and we, didn't, we don't even flinch now at the sight of death anymore. Our society seems to have become numb to the horrific sight of death. Then, if crime is not enough, we are living through the eighth pandemic plague in world's history. COVID claiming the lives of over 70, 17 million people. We are not even over this one, and there is an increase of another disease. The monkeypox. The World Health Organization has declared monkeypox a health emergency of international concern. Jamaica thus far has recorded three cases. They are sending a message to the gay society where this disease is concerned. I declare, we are living in the days of Sodom. And we all know what happened to Sodom eventually, don't we? And this is not the last that we will hear. There will be more. Because now our children in parts of the world are being registered without a gender. There is no longer male or female. We have transgender, gender neutral, non-binary, agender, pan-gender, gender-queer, two-spirit, and much, much more. How can we stay calm in such a whirlwind? For this is become, first, is to become aware that these things will happen. And how do I know this? I know this by reading. Reading of God's manual on what is to come and how we are to live amidst the chaos. It is written in Romans 1, 26 and reading on, for this cause God gave them up unto vile afflictions. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against the law. And likewise men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust, one towards another, men with men, that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. Being filled with unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, deceit, backbiters, haters of God, proud boasters, 
inventors of all evil things and disobedient to parents is just a few on the list. The youth today are confused. Not just the youth, but the older generation. I am confused. But more, I am sorry for the decisions that our young people face today. Some don't think they should work a nine to five job or to live by the sweat of their brow. Scamming has become a new career path that some will take, some wish to take, leading to an early death. I beg you parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, that we talk to our children. Let us read the scriptures from Genesis to Revelation. Let us teach the Ten Commandments in our homes. Why, you may ask? Because when our children leave our sight, they will be introduced to other teachings, won't they? So let us build the foundation we want them to have. And as we continue to do our path, let us pray earnestly. Let us pray consistently. And let us rest assured that ultimately the choice is theirs. We all have a choice. Today we look around, we see the words from the book of Matthew jumping out at us. Brothers and sisters, let us brace ourselves for the disasters to come. Verse 21 and 22 states, For then shall great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, nor ever shall be. And except those days should be shortened, there should be no flesh saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will what? Be cut short. What will you and I do? Are we to lock ourselves in our homes because of fear of venturing outside? You know, I know persons who have decided to do that. But I am here this morning to tell you that it's not all doom and gloom. All is not lost. I recall Romans 5 verse 20. Where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Ellen White in last day's event, page 19 penned. The nations are in unrest. Times of perplexity are upon us. Men's hearts are failing them for fear of the things that are coming upon the earth. But those who believe in God, those who believe in God will hear his voice amid the storm. It is I, be not afraid. We sing each Sabbath, we have this hope. I am here to tell you that our hope involves two major actions. I stated the first one already. And that is to read. Read the words of God. In reading God's word, he will show us the path to take. And he will deliver us. The second act we should engage in is prayer. As Christians, we preach that prayer is the answer. But brothers and sisters, do we really truly believe in its, in its power and purpose in our everyday lives? Prayer is a place of honest, honest expression. A time when we commune with God on our behalf or on the behalf of others. If we consistently pray, we are consistently in the presence of God. And eventually, our character will change to reflect him. When our character starts to depict the character of Christ, we will be still and at peace when all the world is in chaos. Men running to and fro like chicken without a head. We will forever be in his presence. And in his presence there is goodness of joy. Remember Stephen? Stephen faced death. His face showed the glory of God. Not of fear and hurt, but of peace. So much so, that it is then that the heart of Saul, the persecutor of his saints, began to turn. 
I want to be there in heaven to see Stephen's face when Saul, turned Paul, stands before him, a mighty soldier of Christ, the, ones, the one he once hated and fought against. Stephen's witness changed the life of Saul, and so too must our lives change those who are now fighting against the Creator. The church today must stand and make a difference. Remember Jesus as he faced death? His final act was prayer for strength and forbearance. And in that strength, he could once again petition the throne of God to forgive those who now kill him. And that is why you and I can now stand before God clothed in his righteousness. Prayer brings peace and joy even in the face of death. Because live or die in Christ, there is hope of everlasting life. So brothers and sisters, as we enter this season of prayer, my question to you is, are you troubled by the news and what is happening around us? Are you fearful? Are you lost and don't know what to do or how to cope with the increase of crime and the natural disasters around us? Amidst catastrophe all around, let us bring our deepest concern. Let us bring our fears. Let us seek his peace. Let us seek his strength in facing what is already here and what is to come upon the land. Let us seek his protection because he has promised that when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burnt. The flames will not set you ablaze. But to claim his promise, brothers and sisters, we must do our part. We must be obedient to his teaching. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the chariots with fire. And at that time shall Michael stand, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. The Lord declares, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. Not street. The Lord of hosts is with us. God of Jacob is our, ref, is our fortress. His message to us at this time is, Come unto me, be still, and know that I am God. Happy Sabbath, church. Happy Sabbath to those online. Let us turn our thoughts heavenward now as we appeal to the throne of grace, as we pray for the nation. Those who can kneel, if it is possible, please do so reverently. Father in heaven, we want to thank you. Thank you for sparing our lives. Thank you, O oh God, for everything you have done for us thus far. And as we come into your temple courts, we recognize your majesty. We recognize your awesomeness. We recognize that you are God. You are the one who created the world in six days. You spoke and it was done. You commanded and it stood fast. As we enter in your presence this morning, O oh God, we understand and we appreciate the fact 
that the nation is celebrating 60 long years of independence. And Lord, we stand on the wall before you because we know there is still hope for the nation. Almighty Father, as we come, Lord, we pray for the families first of all, because the family is the backbone of the nation. And oh God, there's an enemy. The family is under attack. There is a plan to divide, oh God, and put the family away from you. Father, when we recognize that the devil has but a short time and he's working overtime to divide the family, to get them to go astray. Lord, it weakens the nation because the family is the backbone of the nation. Help us, Lord, to understand and to appreciate the fact that in celebrating independence from 1962 till now, you have been with us. You have blessed us. We have moved from infancy to adulthood and we are advancing. There is still hope for the nation. Father, there are plans afoot to destroy your people. But, oh God, help us to pray for them because were it not for prayer, were it not for the prayers of the saints, oh God, things could be mighty worse. When we look across the length and breadth of Jamaica, from St. Thomas to Negril Point, there is so much bloodshed. The island is saturated in blood. Men are perpetrating evil. Lord, Satan is weaving his spell in the minds of men. But Lord, we as your people, the guardian of your words, help us to continue to provide hope for our nation. Help us to go out and to be witnesses of you, to shine your light so that others may know there's a God in heaven despite what is going on in society. Help us, Almighty God. Give us the strength. Lord, when we consider the devastation, when we see what is taking part, taking place in our nation, oh God, we know that the police cannot seem to handle it. The soldiers cannot seem to handle it. But we know there's a God in heaven that is looking down. He is the solution to all the problems. And one day, sin and sinners will be no more. Almighty God, just be with your church in pause. Help us to be watchmen on the wall of Zion. Telling of your mercy and your grace, of your truth, to let others come into this light before it is too late. Your words, O oh God, are a light unto our path, a lamp unto our feet. It is the way the nation should walk, and there is still hope. All is not lost despite what is going on. Father, be with us. We need you. If ever we need you, it is now. Lord, give us strength. Help each family represented here that we may be symbols and beacons of your matchless love. We may be examples in our communities. We may be examples wherever we work, the schools we attend. Help us, Lord, one by one. Each one can teach one of the love of Jesus. Almighty God, help us. We need your strength. We know that we can't do it alone, oh God, as a nation. We need to just take up the mantle, just to be aware. Because, Father, the devil is using all types of medium to attract the young minds. There's the social media. There's the television, the most dangerous source of all. They seem to be so innocent. The things that are presented to us, oh God, they will transform us for the worse. Help us to pick out the things that represent you. Help us to consciously make that choice and that effort to part, partake in wholesome things, the things that promote growth, the things that promote building of a nation. 
and not the things that pull us down. Help us, O oh God, one with another, hands in hand, that this nation can continue to go forward. Almighty God, we are in the last days. We know that things will get exceedingly worse according to prophecy in the minds of men because men's hearts are desperately wicked. But there's still a set of people, there's a remnant people who still have your message. Help us to live up to that responsibility, to deliver that message without fear or favor. Almighty God, guide us through the power of your Holy Spirit. Be with us in a special way and continue to provide for us. Let this nation be an example to the Caribbean because, Lord, you have brought us so far and we dare not fail you. Almighty Father, be with us in a special way. Be with us, Lord, because we need you. We cannot do it without you. In our own strength, we would surely fail. But, Lord, guide us as this nation moves from strength to strength. Let your spirit prevail. Let your love abound in our heart for one another. Lord, your waiting church is here, ready to take up the mantle, ready to be an example to our nation so that Jamaica under God may prosper. Lord, be with us now. And Father, as we go through the rest of the day, the one you have chosen to present your word to us, I pray, Almighty God, that you'll hide him behind the cross. Let the words that he speak be not his words, but words coming directly from your throne to saturate and feed us. And we will say, before we leave here, it was good of us to be here. Father, whatsoever I have asked of you, I pray, O oh God, because of limited knowledge, that you'll grant it unto us. And may all of us be blessed. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite the deacons to take their positions. Let us pray. Almighty God, our creator and our friend, we give of all good gifts. We thank you for being with us throughout this week, for the many blessings that you have bestowed on us, and for enabling us to work with our hands and our minds, and being able now to come into your courts and return to you our tithes and offerings. I ask you, Father, that as we do so, that we'll also give ourselves, and we ask, Lord, that the tithes and the offerings will be used for the furtherance of your kingdom here on earth. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. First Chronicles 29, 14 declares, But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to give as generously as this? Everything comes from you and we give you only what comes from your hand. Our generosity is inspired by God's generosity. In preparation for the construction of a temple, the Bible reports on the generosity of Israel. First, King David gave lavishly out of his personal treasures. Then the other leaders gave willingly, following his example. Inspired by their leaders, 
the rest of the people gave freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. And seeing such an expression of generosity, David burst into praise and mentioned the factor driving such a profusion in giving by stating, Everything comes from you, O God, and we have given you only what comes from your hand. Abraham, a Messiah man, had a similar mindset. He was the owner of a thousand head of cattle and large herds of sheep and goats. Acknowledging that God was the source of his blessings, he decided to be faithful to God. He placed his cattle in large pens and counted them as they walked through a shoot. Abraham dedicated each tenth cow as a tithe for God. But his friends and acquaintances were amazed. In their culture, people's wealth is measured by the amount of cattle they have. One doesn't just give away cows. So they began to mock him, and many pe people declared him to be crazy. But the laughter stopped abruptly nine months later, when 40 of Abraham's cows gave birth to twins. And in addition, many of his goats and sheep gave birth to triplets. Does he speak and then not act? Does he promise and not fulfill? Numbers 23, 19. This week, as we worship with our tithes and regular offerings, let us reflect on the truthfulness of these words in our whole life. Bring ye all the tithes. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse. Please stand. Good morning, boys and girls. And good morning, bigger boys and girls. All right. So, boys and girls, I would like you to listen up and pay attention. Now, today's story is based on a Bible passage. And the passage is Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20. And I will read it for you. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now the story is about a little eight-year-old boy named Mateus, who is from Brazil. Now, 
father heard Matthias singing. I'm happy today. I'm happy today. In Jesus Christ, I'm happy today. And father wondered, why is Matthias so happy today? You know why Matthias was happy? Matthias was happy because he loved Jesus. And he realized that soon Jesus was coming and he wanted to go home to live with Jesus. And this joy that was welling up in his heart, he wanted to share it with everybody. And so he was singing. Matthias thought for a little bit. Then he went to father and he said, Papa, can I start a Bible class so that I can tell everyone I know, my friends and our neighbors, about Jesus and the heavenly home? Father was a little bit doubtful. After all, he's only eight years old. So he said, do you think you know what you're doing? What do you think Matthew, Matthew said? He said, well, I can learn. And I know Jesus will help me too. So father said, all right, let's do it. He also said, Matthias, let us talk to pastor so and let's see if pastor can give us any tips. So they spoke to pastor. After they spoke to pastor, Matthias prayed. And then off he went, knocking on doors. The first door he knocked on was Pedro's door. And he said, hello, Pedro, with a very big smile. Do you know Jesus? That's the first question he asked. And then he said, do you know he's coming back for us? Then he said, Pedro, I am starting a Bible class, and I am inviting you to come and learn about Jesus. It's going to be on Wednesday nights, and I'm asking you, please come. Well, he continued around the neighborhood, knocking on doors and inviting people. The first Wednesday night came. You think there was a crowd there? No. Everybody was a little bit hesitant. This is an eight-year-old boy after all. What could he talk about? But a few persons turned up, mostly out of curiosity to find out what was going to happen. But you know what, boys and girls? God used Pedro mightily. He preached earnestly for Jesus. And before long, there were t more than 10 people studying. And then 10 people got baptized for Jesus. How about that? Yes. So Pedro continued for three whole years with his Bible group, study group. And then as they grew, he realized, um, this place isn't big enough for everyone. And so he went to Pastor Johnson, and he said, Pastor Johnson, can we build a church so everyone can worship God together? Pastor Johnson said, that's an excellent idea, but where would we get the money? I don't even think our conference can help us. Does anybody want to guess what, Pedro, what Mateo said? That's correct. God will help us. And I will help raise the money too. And so, true to his word, because he loved God so much, Matthias, after he came home from school in the daytime, he went out fundraising and he encouraged others to assist him. And they did. Soon the church members and pastor were building a new church. Of course, it wasn't easy. But they kept on going. At one point, they got discouraged because building materials were in very short supply. So Matthew said to Pastor, Pastor Johnson, why don't you pray for God to send us more cement? And then Pastor Johnson said, yes, let's do that. We will fast and pray for several days and see what God, if God will help us to finish our building. Boys and girls, do you think God helped them finish their building? Yes, he definitely did. And so God provided all that they needed. Matthias and the church members worked hard. 
He came home after school and he laid blocks and poured mortar. And eventually, the church was finished. On opening day, oh my, it was such a wonderful, joyous occasion. Persons were crying because they were so happy for what God did for them, in them, and through them. But they were especially happy for one little boy who had a very big dream of sharing the heavenly home with everyone he knows. Now, Matthias has continued with his Bible study group, and he's continuing to teach others. And as, they te and ha as he teaches, he and his friends now sing, I will wear a crown in my father's house, in my father's house, in my father's house. Yes, that is the song on all their hearts. And you know why? Because there will be no starless crowns in heaven. And each star, as we know, represents someone that you have told or encouraged about Jesus, whom you have shared Jesus with, whom you have helped to impact to come to Christ so that they too can go home to live with him in that heavenly home. Now, back to the passage we read earlier. We know that this passage, this passage is asking us to be disciples for Jesus. Do we remember who a disciple is? Who is a disciple? Yes, a follower of Christ. But this big word that we mentioned earlier, missionary, but this, the topic of the story is missionary for heaven. Who is a missionary? One who? One who goes on a mission, yes. One who shares Jesus in any way they can. And so this story, based on what we learned in the Bible, is based on one little boy who loved Jesus so much that he was willing to be obedient to God and go on God's errand, inviting persons to learn about his heavenly Father so that they too can come to know him and love him. We, before we pray, I have an announcement from the Children's Ministries Department. The Bible, Vacation Bible School that will be, will be in two weeks' time, uh, on the 15th, the 15th um, Auntie Marsha is asking that all the parents meet with her this evening after church she would like to speak with all the parents. Also, she, is, um, uh, she has asked me to tell all the boys and girls that after church is registration for vacation Bible school. So please remember to come out after Vespers so that you can be a part of this awesome experience where we get another opportunity to learn so much more about Jesus. Boys and girls, I'm encouraging all of you to be missionaries, little missionaries for Jesus in everything that we say and do, in being kind and compassionate, in sharing, in telling others about the Bible stories that you learn every day so that they too can come to learn about our Father God and our Savior Jesus. At this time, I would ask all of you to clasp your hands and close your eyes as we pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that you love us with an everlasting love. And we thank you that your Holy Spirit teaches us every day how to be loving just like you are. We pray, Father, that you will help us to listen to you all the time so that we can represent you the best way we know how. Help us, Lord, to be kind, to be giving, to be compassionate, to be helpful, to be obedient. And help us, Lord, to trust you and have faith in you. So, and help us to tell others about you 
so that they can come to know you and love you like we do, but so also, Lord, so that they can go home to live with you in heaven. Bless us to this end, we pray, dear Jesus, for in your precious and holy name we pray. Amen. Good afternoon, church. Please stand at attention for the national anthem. And please be reminded that this anthem is like a prayer for our nation. It is. Anthem that is a prayer. I truly believe that the one who wrote it was inspired to pen those words. So today we continue to focus on prayer for the nation. Is there hope for the nation? Oh, yes. yes, I believe. But if we are to embrace this hope, as was said earlier, we must begin to pray for the families within the nation because Satan is working through the family to disrupt and destroy the nation. We all know that the family is the building block of any nation. Well-ordered families leads to a stable society and a strong nation. Satan knows that all too well. That is why he attacks the family. He wants to destabilize the society, which will have a rippling effect on the nation. The truth is, he has been doing this for ages. And sad to say, with much success. The word of God has records of his action in biblical history. We need not look too far either. Because the account in Genesis chapter 27 and beyond paints a sordid picture of what could only be classified 
as a dysfunctional family. And the picture I'm going to paint is, will help us to understand why I said we must pray for our, the families within the nation. You remember Jacob's family? Yes. Isaac, the father of Jacob, knew that Esau was not fit to assume leader of the tribe. Yet still he was bent on doing that. And what we see happening here, Rebecca, who knew what God had communicated to her, took matters in her own hands and decided to bestow the birthright on her beloved son, Jacob, who became a party, who became a party to the deception. And so we see lies, deception, and hatred in this family. Later on, we see Jacob showing favoritism to one of his sons, Joseph, which caused the other brothers to hate him and decide to get rid of him to the extent that they sold him into slavery. If there was a dysfunctional family, that should have been disintegrated into nothingness. This was the family. Two brothers kill an entire town of men because one of the men of the town raped their sister. This was a dysfunctional family. But for God, but for God, this family would have come to naught. We see the persevering answers to prayer. We are reminded that when God said to Jacob, go back to your homeland, how he agonized with God for an entire night in prayer. Did God respond to his prayer? Yes, a matter of fact. The account tells us that it was that Night that God changed his name from Jacob the deceiver to Israel. God said, you have powered with God and with men. As a prince, you have powered with God and men and you have prevailed. Today we are here to persevere in prayer. Satan was seeking to destroy this family. Why? Because he knew that God had a plan for this family. It was through this family, or let me say, the sons of Jacob, that the nation of Israel was formed. The tribes. Satan knew all too well God's plan. No doubt he would have heard or knew when God said the famous prophetic words to Abraham in Genesis 12:3. He said, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So he knew. So if he could destroy this family, there'll be no nation Israel. There'll be no Messiah coming through this family either. No savior. So you see his plan? He attacks the family. Is he doing the same today? Yes. Yes. So we must be mindful how he works. And that is why today we are going to pray for our leaders, pray for the families. And let me hasten to say before we enter into this season of prayer, very often people pray for world peace. It will not happen. Based on scripture, we will not have world peace. Not now, only when Jesus comes. So we're going to pray with understanding today. We're going to pray that God will hold back the winds of strife so that the message of salvation will go forward with power and clarity. We're going to pray that God will give us a season of peace where you and I, God's church, can go forth to minister to hurting families. God is counting on us. The word of God tells us that this gospel must be preached in all the world. For a what? A weakness. And then the end will come. So we must pray with understanding. 
Yes. In the same breath, let us pray that God will pour out his spirit. Because we need courage. We need boldness to go forth. We live in a time where men's hearts are failing them for fear. So we need that courage. We need that empowerment from the spirit. We must make preparation for that outpouring. Because the Spirit is going to be outpoured, but only those who have made the preparation for His reception will be filled to go forth. And so today, we have invited members of government, well, government officials, and we have Mr. Errol Green is here. I don't know how many others are here going to ask anybody who fits the capacity as a government leader, permanent secretaries, those who are here, we're going to ask you to come up front. We are going to pray on your behalf. We're going to pray on your behalf because we know that prayer changes things. Prayer makes a difference. As was said earlier, if we were not praying, it would have been worse. So we thank God for the prayers of the saint. So Mr. Green, come forward. And all those who occupy offices in government areas, I'm going to ask you to come forward. We are going to mention your name or call you up in prayer. And so I'm going to ask our elders to just come up front also. Join us as we seek God in prayer. We know that we serve a prayer here in God. One who knows, one who understands, one who stands ready to help us. Just going to ask you to breathe a word of prayer for a minute in your own space. And then I will do the prayer. All right. Just pray for a minute and then I will do the official prayer. Heavenly Father and our God, we pause at this moment of prayer. Today, O oh God, is a day when the church have set aside this day as a day of prayer for the leaders of our nation. Lord, we recognize, O oh God, that you are the one who place men and women in offices. You are the one who set up and so, Lord, we are here this morning to lift up those you have placed in these offices to lead the nation. We have come to live in challenging times. The enemy is at work. He knows his time is short. And so he's working through the families to destroy nations. Lord, today we lift up the prime minister of this country and his ministers, their spouses, and their families. We lift up the leader of the opposition, his ministers, their spouses, and their families. Oh God, I pray that you will help them to understand that without vision, the people will perish. 
So help them, O oh God, to seek your face for direction and guidance. Help them, O oh God. We pray for members of the judicial court, those who dispense justice in this country of ours. We lift them up to their God and their families before you. And we pray, O oh God, that you will help them to understand that you are the God of justice and the people have elected them to serve in this capacity to dispense justice. And so impress on their minds the awesome responsibility that they have been entrusted to do. We pray, O oh God, for the commissioner of police and his family. We pray for the JDF staff and the soldiers that are called, O oh God, to serve. We pray for them, dear Lord. We pray that you will protect them because evil forces are arrayed against them to destroy them. So we pray, O oh God, that you will dispatch angels to surround them. And I pray that they, they will be mindful that they are also accountable to you. And so they will act according to your guidelines. O oh God, we pray for the permanent secretaries, those who are state ministers, and all those who occupy leadership position, such as Mr. Errol Green and others. We pray we lift them up before you, O oh God, and we pray that you will protect them, and you will guide them, and you will speak to them, and help them to know, O oh God, that you are the God who hears and answers prayers. You are the God who, if they seek your face, you will direct them and you will instruct them. So help them, O oh God, to listen to your voice as they seek your face. We are living in dire times, O oh God. The nation is in turmoil because the enemy of our souls is working overtime to destroy. So we place the families of this church and the families, those of the nation, we place them before you. We place, oh God, the families of the church. May we recognize, oh God, that you have called us for such a time as this. You have called us to give our service to you. To make ourselves available so that you can use us to minister to those who are hurting. We pray for those families who have not yet come to the realization that your coming is near. The families within this nation who the enemy is seeking to destroy. May by your Holy Spirit leading us to them, we'll point them to the man Christ Jesus. To let them know that there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. To let them know that there may be a way that seems right unto them, but it leads to death and destruction, and that Jesus and him only is the way. And so, Lord, empower your church. Help us, O oh Lord, that we will avail ourselves to you for the empowerment of your spirit, and we'll make ourselves available to your beck and call. And so, Lord, hear our prayers as we circle those who have come up. May you build a hedge around them. May angels be dispatched to guide them and to pro protect them and their homes and their affairs. And we pray, O oh God, that those who have not yet accepted you as Lord and Savior will recognize that your coming is near and that they need to surrender to you so that you can be Lord and Savior of their lives. We thank you, O oh God for hearing our prayers. And we know, O oh God, that as you hear, you will act in our best interest. We long for the day, O oh God, when service of this nature will come to an end. But until then, we have a work to do. And help us to do it faithfully. Pray, O oh God, that those within the hearing of my voice, those who online, May we work assiduously, O oh God, and faithfully to garner souls in your kingdom. Help us, O oh God, to tear down the stronghold of the evil one. And finally, O oh God, when you have completed your work in us and through us, 
and Jesus will say it is done. I pray, oh God, that none of us within the hearing of my voice will be missing from this great throng that will enter through the pearly gates. Oh God, hear our prayers. Cleanse us from our sins so that you can hear our prayers. And at last, you will receive us as your own to live with you through the ceaseless ages of eternity. For this is our prayer with thanksgiving, for we ask it all in Jesus' holy and precious name. Amen. Good afternoon, church. Happy Sabbath. Please stand for the scripture reading. So the scripture reading is taken from Daniel chapter 9, verses 18 to 19. That's Daniel chapter 9, 18 to 19. And I'll read in your hearing. O my God, incline thine ear and hear upon thine eyes, and behold our desolations and the city which is called by thy name. For we do not present our supplications before thee for our righteousness, but for thy great mercies. O Lord, hear, O Lord, forgive, O Lord, hearken and do, defer not for thine own sake. O oh my God, for the city and thine people are called by thy name. Have a blessed Sabbath. You may be seated. The privilege is mine to introduce the person on whose heart God has placed a word of exhortation for us today. This individual hails from the parish of Kingston. And he's a proud graduate of what some would call the True Blue Jamaica College. I, I gather that he is a sprinter of some repute. So given the dearth in the male sprinting in Jamaica today, I don't know, maybe the J3 or some of you here might want to persuade him to come out of retirement. He has been married for the last 16 years to the beautiful Denise. I'm going to invite her to stand so you can all see her. Wonderful. Together, they have one daughter who will be moving to Fort Form at the Kingsway High School, Sister Gia Smith. I'm going to invite her to stand also. Right, that's Sister Gia over there. Now, interestingly, if I were to ask the church, entire church, including those online, to guess what, what this man's hobby is, I'm sure that half of you wouldn't get it. Hmm? Table tennis, come on. Fishing, oh no. What this gentleman enjoys doing in his spare time is mere some work. Yes, mystery is his, is his hobby. So you have a wonderful pastor here with you. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a man who loves to study and to preach the word. And I'm happy that the Lord has placed a word on his heart for us today. I speak of no other than our pastor Howard Smith. But before he give us that word which the Lord has given to him, I invite you to just sit back, relax as the song of meditation prepares our heart for the message. Happy Sabbath again, church. Thank you for the price you've 
bearing all my sins and shame in love you came and gave amazing grace thank you for this love lord thank you for the nail pierced wash me in your cleansing
Amen. Amen. My understanding is this is a young convert, Sister Paula Gordon, and um, continue to allow the Lord to use you as you minister to his people. I was blessed by that. You Oh, I'm also hearing she's one of the youngest couple uh, here in the church. Congratulations to you. You could tell that she was singing from her heart, couldn't you? And that's the kind of sacrifice that God accepts. One that comes from the heart. And it prepares the preacher to minister to the saints of God. The day is far spent. Uh, we want to right away get into the word of God. I have been truly blessed by the service today. And let us continue to pray for our leaders and the nation. Sure. 60 years and still growing. We have much to give God thanks for. Because there were days when it was just Chamkar, Donkey Cat. Nowadays, very few of you take public transportation. And um, we have buses with air conditions. I, I hear we have to work on a new fleet, but we pray about that as well. <laughs> um, we give God thanks for all the things that have happened in this little island called Jamaica. We cannot be ignored, the little black, green, and gold place. Can we dominate in track and field? And I must rejoice with my wife <laughs> because Jamaica beat Australia yesterday. And <laughs> brethren, that's something. Is that they haven't done that at the Commonwealth Games ever. But they did it. And it was as if it was a final match in the series, but it's not the final, but it, it felt like it. And so we're happy for that. So we, we continue to make our mark on the world. We just cannot be ignored. We cannot be ignored in music. And the reality is most of you do know I'm sure when you go overseas, people want to hear your chat some patter, don't it? Not true? Of course. I have had that experience. So do not, and by the way, um, it took a while, but you know, people are coming to understand that our Creole is, is a language. And um, we must not be ashamed of it. And please stop telling the children if you stop chat bad. Stop doing that. Teach them to speak good English, yes, but don't tell them patois is bad. Please. Um, and it's just because I don't see the Old Testament in the Jamaican Creole yet, why I didn't bring my Jamaican Bible, my Creole Bible. Because I have the New Testament, and my wife, you know, sometimes she's afraid when I carry it because she knows I'm going to read it. And, 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 and so forth. Um, I would encourage every North Street members and those online, uh, acquire a Jamaican Patwa Bible. The New Testament. It, they start with the, the book of Luke, but now they have the whole New Testament. I guess they are still working on the Old Testament, and I am longing to see it come. I really want to see it come so that I can get to read it to you, even if you don't like it, because I love it. I love my Jamaican Creole. 
our scripture for meditation came to us from the book of Daniel chapter 9. I am aware of the time. I am aware of the time. But yet, but, but think about it. It is the first Sabbath message from your new pastor. Really and truly. Um, um, I know should have put me up a little earlier. <laughs> But it's all right. I understand the times. And we have been having a good time so far. Daniel. The, my, my, my topic today. Delayed independence. Huh? Delayed independence. Father, please help me to proclaim your word to your people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Delayed independence. According to Wikipedia, uh, that has become a, a popular dictionary to use, popular place to do some research. Independence is a condition of a person, nation, country, or state in which residence and population or some portions thereof exercise self-government and usually sovereignty over its territory. The opposite of independence is the status of a dependent territory. Dependent territory. Jamaica, many of us should know, received independence in 1962. This is according to the Jamaican, Jamaica Information Service. In February... 1962, a new constitution was approved by the legislature and Premier Norman Manley called the general elections. Alexander Bustamante was elected in April and became the first Prime Minister of Jamaica. On August 6, 1962, Jamaica became an independent nation and a member of the British Commonwealth. Jamaica becoming an independent nation now meant that Britain no longer controlled the affairs of the country. It was now the responsibility of the newly elected Prime Minister and the locally elected Cabinet. Independence also meant that a constitution, symbols, emblems, an army, Jamaican currency, and passports had to be developed for the country. When Sir Alexander Bustamante began to make his presence felt in Jamaica, the country was still a crown colony. Under this system, the governor had the right to veto at all times, which he very often exercised against the wishes of the majority. Bustamante was quick to realize that the social and economic ills that such a system engendered had to be countered by mobilization of the working class. Pay and working conditions were poor in the 1920s and 1930s. Failing harvest and the layoff of workers resulted in an influx of unemployed people moving from the rural areas into the city. 
This mass migration did little to alleviate the already tremendous unemployment problem. Some things have changed. Some things have not. I uh, went on the Jamaica Constabulary website and this report is titled Serious Crimes Report for January 1st to July 25, 2022 and the comparative period 2021. And this is a summary of it. Murder, shooting, persons injured, persons raped, robbery, break in and the grand total in 2021 from the period January 1 to 25 2835 the same period in 2022 2837 with these statistics, it means that, and hear this, and this is just my layman calculations, it means that approximately eight serious crimes are being committed each day in Jamaica. That is three crimes, three serious crimes every hour and hear this every 20 seconds there is a serious crime being committed in our country one two twenty we are under bondage please remember my topic delayed independence we are under the bondage of a pandemic called COVID-19 and um, according to the Ministry of Health website with the positive re positivity rate as of Wednesday this week 33.5 percent we are where we don't want to be well, now there is monkeypox. And you heard what our sister shared earlier. There are three of them. And it seems to be affecting the homosexual community in a significant way worldwide. Hmm. Food for thought. Our children are being taken away through human trafficking, and it seems that there is, this is where the modern slave trade exists. You know, I thank God for the abolition of slavery in Jamaica, but other types of slavery still linger in Jamaica and the world. For example, there are alcoholics. They are drug addicts. They are persons who are workaholics. <laughs> Some people are not comfortable in their own skin, so they bleach it. I happen to love my complexion. I will not trade it for anything. Some people don't want... <laughs> Hear this one. And this happens a lot in the inner city. Some people don't want to be committed in a relationship and get married. But they are sexually active and they can't seem to stop. Some people can't save because they're addicted to gambling. 
Praise God for the change and the gale. Hallelujah. Some people are addicted to video games and dance hall music. Some people are addicted to makeup. All these and more are difficult forms of slavery. And if you are a slave, you can't get away. You don't have control over yourself. You are bonded in mental chains that are not easily broken. The problem was, according to our scripture reading today, according to the prophet Jeremiah, as Daniel read, the children of Israel were supposed to have been an independent nation by now, but they were not. Independence was delayed. This was what the prophet Daniel realized during his study of the scrolls. He was having his regular Bible study and he recognized that the prediction that the prophet Jeremiah made about the captivity of the children of Israel was now supposed to come to an end. But the children of Israel were still in bondage. They were not independent yet. Now these are the words of the letter which Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem to the rest of the elders of the exile, the priests, the prophets, and all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had taken into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. And this was after King Jeconiah and the queen mother, the court officials, the princes of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen and the smiths, had departed from Jerusalem. The letter was sent by the hand of Elassa, the son of Shaphan, and Gemariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, the king of Judah, sent to Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exile whom I have sent into exile. Uh, did you get that? Sometimes it is God that sends us into exile. God instructed his people Build houses and live in them. Plant gardens and eat their produce. Take wives and become fathers of sons and daughters. Take wives for your sons. Give your daughters to husbands that they may bear sons and daughters and multiply there and do not decrease. Seek the welfare of the city where I have sent you into exile. And pray like we did today. Pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in its welfare, you will have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. Do not let your prophets who are in your midst and your diviners deceive you. And do not listen to the dreams which they have dreamed. For they prophesy falsely to you in my name. I have not sent them, declares the Lord. For thus says the Lord, When seventy years have been completed for Babylon, I will visit and fulfill my good words to you to bring you back to this place. Seventy years. The time had come. But the children of Israel were still in bondage. Delayed independence. The prophet Daniel pondered, Why are we still in bondage? And I must ask the question, 
Why are we in Jamaica seemingly still in bondage? What's wrong with our nation? It seems as if we are having independence delayed. Hmm. But here's the truth. The truth is, it is still righteousness that exalts a nation will the church say amen. And it is still sin that is a, ro a reproach unto all people. Righteousness, the Bible says, exalts a what? But sin is a what? Reproach to any people according to Proverbs 14 verse 34. Sin, no doubt, delays independence. If we sin, we are slaves to sin. We are still under bondage. No matter what people say, as someone that sins is a sinner. And the wages of sin is death. It is the word of God that is truth. It's not what politicians say. It's not what your friends say. It's not what false preachers say. It is what God says that is the truth. The Bible says, but it shall come to pass if you do not obey. <laughs> uh, please understand. Daniel couldn't understand, but he remembered what the word of the Lord said in the book of the law, according to Moses. It shall come to pass if you do not obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments and his statutes, which I command you today, that all these curses will, not may, not maybe, will come upon you and overtake you. Cursed shall, be you, shall you be in the city, and cursed shall you be in this country, Cursed shall you be, shall be your baskets and your kneading bowl. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the produce of your land, the increase of your cattle and the offspring of your flocks. Cursed shall you be when you come in and cursed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will send you, send on you cursing, confusion and rebuke in all that you set your hand to do until you are destroyed and until you perish quickly because of the wickedness of your doings in which you have forsaken me the Lord will make the plague cling to you until he has consumed you from the land which you are going to possess it's a hard word. The Lord will strike you with consumption, with fever, with inflammation, with severe burning fever, with the sword, with scorching, with mildew, and shall pursue you until you perish. And your heavens which are over your head shall be bronze. You can find all of this in um, Deuteronomy chapter 28, brethren. And the earth which is under you shall be iron. The Lord will change the rain of your land to powder and dust. I wonder if that has anything to do with the Saharan dust that we face every year. From the heaven it shall come down on you until you are destroyed. The Lord will cause you to be defeated before your enemies. You shall go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them. And you shall become troublesome to all the kingdoms of the earth. 
Your carcasses shall be food for all the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth and no one shall frighten them away. <laughs> oh boy, have mercy God. The Lord will strike you with boils. That sounds familiar. The boils of Egypt with tumors and scabs and with the itch from which you cannot be healed. And you shall grope at noonday as a blind man gropes in darkness. You shall not prosper in your ways. You shall be only oppressed and plundered continually. And no one shall save you. You shall betroth a wife, but another man shall lie with her. You shall build a house, but you shall not dwell in it. You shall plant a vineyard, but shall not gather its grapes. Your ox shall be slaughtered before your eyes, but you shall not eat of it. Your donkey shall be violently taken away from you, and you shall not be and it shall not be restored to you. Your sheep shall be given to your enemies, and you shall have no one to rescue you. Human trafficking, your sons and your daughters shall be given to another people. And your eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all day long. And there shall be no strength in your hand. A nation whom you have not known shall eat the fruit of your land and pro the produce of your labor. And you shall be only oppressed and crushed continually. Have mercy, God. So you shall be driven mad because of the sight which your eyes see. The Lord will strike you in the knees and on the legs with severe boils which cannot be healed. And from the sole of your foot to the top of your head, the Lord will bring you and the king whom you set over you to a nation which neither which you nor your fathers have known and there shall they shall serve other gods the gods of wood and stone and you shall become an astonishment a proverb a byword among all nations where the lord will drive you you shall carry much seed out to the field but gather little in for the locusts will consume it you shall plant vineyard and tend them but you shall neither drink the wine nor the grapes for the worms shall eat them you shall have olive trees throughout all your territory but you shall not anoint yourself with the oil for your olives shall drop off you shall beget sons and daughters, but they shall not be yours, for they shall go into captivity. What a heavy word. Locusts shall consume all your trees and the produce of your land. The aliens who is among you shall rise higher and higher above you, and you shall come down lower and lower. He shall lend to you, but you shall not lend to him. He shall be the head and you shall be the tail. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon you and pursue and overtake you until you are destroyed because you did not obey the voice of the Lord your God to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded you and they shall be upon you as a sign and wonder and on your descendants because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and gladness of heart. Brothers and sisters, Daniel, 
Daniel was concerned because the nation should have been independent but they were still in bondage and all of the curses that was pronounced by the prophet Moses were being fulfilled on the children of Israel. You see, Daniel recognized that independence was delayed. But, I love the word but. But he also knew the God that he said, how many in church today know the God who you serve? Would you say amen? He knew the God that he served. Daniel read all of Jeremiah's letter because the letter didn't end in the negative. Are you with me? Because you must understand that there is a flip side to the curses that God would place on people who were disobedient. For the word of the Lord said, now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. Would you say amen? Because you obey the voice of your God, the Bible says, Blessed shall be you in the city because you obey God. Blessed shall you be in the country because you obey God. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your baskets and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall be you when you come in. And blessed shall you be when you go out, praise the Lord. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated. Would you say amen? Before your face, they shall come out against you one way and flee from before you seven ways. Hallelujah. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all which you set your hand and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. Praise God. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. Just as he swore to you. And by the way, when God makes a promise, he will keep it. Would you say amen? amen. He will establish you as a holy people to himself. Just as he swore. If you keep the commandments of the Lord. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you. Are you with me? And the Lord will grant plenty of goods in the fruit of your body, increase in your livestock, and in the produce of your ground. In the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord will open to you his good treasure. The heavens to give the rain to your land in its season. And to bless all the works of your hand. You shall lend to many nations. But you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head. Hallelujah. And not the tail, would you say amen? You shall be above only and not beneath, would you say praise the Lord? If you heed the commandments of the Lord, Jamaica, you shall be the head and not the tail. You must be obedient to God. Be careful to observe the commandments of the Lord. So shall not turn aside from any other word which I command you this day. To the right or the left to go after other gods to serve them. You see, Daniel knew the God he served. Do you know the God you serve? <laughs> the God you serve is omnipotent. Would you say amen? The God you serve is holy and righteous. Would you say amen? The God you serve is the Alpha and the Omega. Would you say amen? He is the beginning and the end. You see, God 
is our shelter in the time of storm would you say amen he is our healer when we are sick he is our teacher when we need an education would you say amen he is our lawyer when we are being tried he is our provider when we need a job does anybody need a job god is our provider he is our protector when we are scared for god did not give us a spirit of fear but of what power and of love and of a sound mind would the church say amen he is our rock in the weary land would you say amen he is our shelter in the middle of the storm we must understand the god that we serve the God that we serve is our bread when we are hungry. He is our water when we are thirsty. When you trust in Jesus, he is a lily of the valley. He is a bright and morning star. Even though we walk in darkness, Jesus is a light of the world. So let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. Hallelujah. And glorify who? Your father who is where? In heaven. I told you. Daniel did not finish the letter without looking at the positive side of Jeremiah chapter 29. Verse 11 states, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, Jamaica, 60 year old. I know the thoughts that I think toward you, North Street. I know the thoughts I think towards you in cyberspace. I know the thoughts I think towards you. We must understand that God has good thoughts. The Lord says he has thoughts of peace and not of evil, would you say amen? To give you a future and a hope, would you say amen? Then you will call upon me. Will someone call upon Jesus today? The Bible says, then you will call upon me and go and pray to me and I will listen to you. Don't you know if my people <laughs> who are called by my name <laughs> shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I will hear from heaven I will forgive their sins and I will heal their land when you seek me you will find me when you search for me with all your heart are there any heart searchers today? When you're searching for Jesus, you must search for him with all your heart. You can't be a wishy-washy Christian. You can't be a spineless Christian. You must be a blood-washed, water-baptized, Holy Ghost-filled Christian. We must tell people about the love of Jesus. independence delayed but we serve a God who is a God of independence haven't you heard whom the son shall set free is free indeed it's not Britain that give us independence it is a God of heaven he is our liberator We must wrap up now, eh? If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves. You know, some are too proud. We're too proud. And pride goeth before a fall. We're too proud. But if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn that sound like repentance. Jamaica, it's time to repent. We must repent. Jamaica 60, we must repent.
turn from their wicked ways. And I will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sins and heal their land. Don't you want that kind of a land? A healed land. That's a truly independent land. Would you say amen? That's why Daniel prayed. That's why Daniel prayed. And I want the musician to draw near to the organ or something right now. That's why Daniel prayed. Take some time to read Daniel chapter 9. Read the prayer of Daniel. And the prayer is still relevant today. Did you hear me? Daniel's prayer that he prayed so many years ago is still relevant today. The Bible says, I prayed to the Lord my God and confessed and said, Alas, O Lord, the great and awesome God who keeps his covenant and loving kindness for those who love him and keep his commandments. We have sinned. We have committed iniquity. We have acted wickedly and rebelled, even turning aside from your commandments and ordinances. Moreover, we have not listened to your servants, the prophets, who spoke in your name to our kings, our princes, our fathers, and all the people of the land. Righteousness belongs to you, O Lord, but to us open shame. As it is this day, to the men of Judah, to the men and women of Jamaica, to the men and women and boys and girls of North Street, to the men and women and children on, in cyberspace, the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all Israel, those who are nearby and those who are far away in all the countries to which you have driven them because of their unfaithful deeds which they have committed against you. Open shame belongs to us. We are sorry, God. O oh Lord, to our kings, our princes, and our fathers, because we have sinned against you, Lord, we are sorry. To the Lord, our God, belongs compassion and forgiveness, for we have rebelled against him. Sorry, Lord. Nor have we obeyed the voice of the Lord, our God, to walk in his teachings, which he set before us through his servants, the prophets. Have mercy on us, Lord. Indeed, all Israel is has transgressed your law, turned aside, not obeying your voice. So the curse has been poured out on us along with the oath which is written in the law of Moses to the servant of God. For we have sinned against him. Thus he has confirmed his words which he had spoken against us and against our rulers to bring on us great calamity, delayed independence. For under the whole heaven there is not been done anything like what has been done to Jerusalem. As it is written in the law of Moses, all this calamity has come on us. Yet we have, sought, we have not sought the favor of the Lord our God, by turning from the, our iniquities and giving attention to your truth. Therefore, the Lord has kept the calamity in store and brought it on us. For the Lord our God is righteous with respect to all his deeds which he has done. But we have not obeyed his voice. And now, O oh Lord, O oh Lord our God, who have brought your people out of the land of Egypt with a mighty hand and have made a name for yourself. As it is this day, we confess we have sinned. We have been wicked. O oh Lord, in accordance with your righteous acts, let your anger and your wrath turn away from your city, Jerusalem, your holy mountain, 
For because of our sins, the iniquities of our fathers, Jerusalem, the, and your people have become a reproach to all these around us. So now, our God, listen to the prayer of your servant. Have you been praying to God for the nation? Listen to the prayer of your servant and to the supplication for your sake. For your sake, O oh Lord, let your face shine on your desolate sanctuary. O oh my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolation and the city which is called by your name. For we are not presenting our supplication before you on our account of the merits that we have, but on the account of your great compassion. Oh Lord, hear. Oh Lord, forgive. Oh Lord, listen and take action for your own sake. Oh my God, do not delay because your city and your people are called by your name. Will you hear us today? Today, what is on your heart? Have you interceded? Have you interceded on behalf of the nation? Have you? Have you? Spirit of the living God, Sir Allen, have you interceded on behalf of this nation called Jamaica that is riddled with crime and violence and corruption? Have you prayed for the leaders? Have you prayed for the law enforcers? What has been your prayer? Have you prayed for the nation? Today, our nation faces all kinds of struggles because there is much sin in the land. But we have hope in Jesus, Spirit of the living God. So now we stand together today. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Do you love the Lord enough to intercede on behalf of your country? Do you love the Lord enough to intercede on behalf of your neighbor, your co-worker? Do you love the Lord enough to intercede on behalf of the people in the North Street area? Are you praying to God for deliverance for this nation? Go down a little low. I had a challenge to watch that funeral with those, that whole family that was slaughtered. I couldn't watch it. That was too much for me. What kind of world have we come to live in? And then we expect the country to prosper. We expect Jamaica to be a place to live and raise families, do business. That's what we're looking for. Huh? And yet, the country 
is drowning in blood. Brothers and sisters, God wants to do our work. God wants to give true independence. But the people of God has got to be like Daniel. <laughs> the people of God have got to look at the signs of the times. Understand the prophecies. And cry out to God. Cry out to God to hold back the winds of strife. There are many people who do not know the Lord yet. We must pray. We must pray. Brothers and sisters, we are a nation in trouble. But we serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty God. He doesn't know how to lose. He's mighty. Powerful. The devil is only a roaring lion. But God is the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. So my brothers and my sisters, Pastor Nathan is here with us today and we need to pray for the nation. We need to pray for the country. We need to pray for the church that the church of the living God would rise up and take its place. Let us be beacons for Jesus. You're here today or online. You have not yet surrendered your heart to Jesus. Just before Pastor Nathan prays. And you know you need to come to Jesus. And you have tried many things to succeed in life. But it has failed. The scriptures explained why. If we don't obey God, he can't bless you. And so, my brothers and sisters... You're here today. You have not surrendered your heart to Jesus. Would you raise your hand today? We want to include you in this prayer. You have not yet surrendered your heart to Jesus. You know you need to do that. We want to pray for you today. You're here today. Would you raise that hand? We, we want to include you in this prayer. If you're in the chat, just raise your hand in the chat. The tech team is there to monitor. You have not yet surrendered your heart to Jesus. Your independence is delayed. God wants to set you free. Would you surrender your heart to him today? Raise your hand in the chat, those who are here today. I see that hand, brother. I see that hand. Is there someone else here today who wants to raise a hand so that you can be included in this prayer? As a matter of fact, my brother, you can walk to the altar. Just walk to the altar. You're here today. You have not surrendered your heart to Jesus. God has given you the formula. He wants you to serve him. Amen. You're here today. Would you surrender your heart to him? Is there one more for Jesus today? Would you raise that hand? Would you raise that hand? Is there one more for Jesus? Praise God, my brother. Is there one more for Jesus today? You want to surrender your heart to Jesus. God is offering to you his salvation. Are there people online responding? For those of us who have not yet, not yet resolved in their hearts that they're going to remain steadfast today, Make up your mind today, brothers and sisters, that you will be faithful to God because this race is not for the swift, nor is the battle for the strong, but only those who endure to the end. Let us be faithful, brothers and sisters. Pastor Nathan, 
Would you pray for us? Shall we? Thank you. What a day. What a day this has been. We came and we listened. And we know that every sermon should have an appeal. And we have heard his call today. And our hearts respond with joy. We ask that God will come into this place and to fill our hearts. Let us pray. Oh God, oh Heavenly Father, we have come one more time at the foot of the cross saying, Lord, we hear of shores of blessings we hear they have been scattered full and free, full and wide, shores of thirsty souls refreshing. But as individuals, Lord, we're saying, Lord, let some drops fall in my direction. We sung, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh. On me, today, it is an individual of fear. Break me, melt me, mold me, fill me. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on me. Lord, like the Apostle Paul, in Romans 7, we have not loved you as we ought. We have not served you as we ought. We have done things we are not to have done. And we have left undone things we should have done. But Lord, because you are God of love and mercy and grace, we say, Lord, let some drops now fall in our direction. For the good I would, I do not. And the evil I would not, that is what I do. And so, Lord, we realize that there is a great controversy that is taking place within each heart. But, Lord, you are the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. You can break every chain and set your people free. We pray, Lord, that the concept, the concept, Lord, of emancipation, will be realized in the hearts of individuals who are still slave to different kinds of adversities, different kinds of maladies. We are still seeking emancipation, Lord, for some of us are still held captive by bad deeds, by bad practices, and our own lifestyle, the way we live, is causing our own demise. And so, Lord, we pray that you will liberate your people today from the different captivities to which we have fallen. And we know, Lord, that you have set the stage that we can be free because your blood was, said, was shed on Calvary. Because of your shed blood, dear Lord, we have hope of forgiveness, hope of eternal life, hope of being freed from the different things that has enslaved our lives. But Lord, as an individual, we need help. But as a country, we need help. Lord, we realize that the security forces are not able to cope because the problem of our country is a problem of sin, is a problem of the human heart. And the human heart is desperately wicked. 
And no matter what we do, we cannot change the heart of wickedness. But thank God that there is a God who promises that he can remove the stony heart of sin and replace that with the heart of flesh. So today we ask for cleansing and we ask, Lord, that you will perform that surgery and remove sin so that we serve you in spirit and in truth. Lord, we pray that divine intervention will come upon this nation as we deal with the scourge of crime and violence. Send your spirit, Lord, and touch the hearts of men, beat by the forces of evil and wicked men for the sake of your people. Because you promise that if we can find 10, if we can find 20 righteous people, then you'll spare the city. Lord, we know that there are righteous people in this city. So we thank you for the promise of salvation. We pray, Lord, that you will bless the leaders of our country. Help them in each individual as they lead out in their different portfolios. That they realize, oh Lord, that without vision, the people will perish. So give our leaders the vision that can only be given by the spirit of the living God. So today as we bring our service to a close, we pray like Nehemiah and we pray like Daniel that you will forgive our sins and you will cleanse our land. Thank you, Lord, that you have promised that if your people that are called by your name will humble themselves and pray. And if they will forsake their wicked ways and call on you, then you will hear from heaven and heal the land. Today, the church has set aside this day to pray for the nation. And so, Lord, for the sake of your people, send healing on Jamaica land we love. In Jesus' name we pray. Let us all say, Amen. 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 You may be seated. Members, remember, and visitors, remember that due to the COVID-19 pandemic, we have not yet reverted to the handshaking at the doors. So, as, is, as usual, just asking you to leave the sanctuary in an orderly fashion. Thank you.